everybody, it's Sunday! Sunday is D and D day! Oh yeah! Someone did a weird whoop. Listen, brother. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Exactly. Who could that have been? Who side. would do a weird whoop? This is my whoop. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> That's not his whoop. That's my his whoop. <laughs> Yeah, oh, there it is. There it is. Anyway, oh. it's Sunday. That means it's High Rollers Yay! Day. It's time to play some D and D. I am your dungeon master, Mark. No, you're not. Humes. <laughs> no, you're not. Prove it. I am. <laughs> and joining me this week, we have. We got the full squad. We've got Rhiannon. We've got Trot. We've got Kim. What do you say? We've got Tom and we've got Katie. Once again, we have Goth, goth side and less Goth side. Dark <laughs> Yes. Oh, look at wow. these three. Yeah. Look at them. Oh. Oh. How does that have a feel in my heart, though? Yeah, you hide the goth inside. I do not. Most of my work You've is joined black. us in the goth corner. Oh, yeah. I, yes, I am. Yeah, I'm wearing my. Uh, you're giving me more Apple vibes. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Do, I can feel that as well. Yeah. Yeah. What are you announcing today? Mm. Lick Today, the balls. I'm going to be announcing several things. Oh. We actually have announcements. So. <laughs> this is the lead-in. Nice segue. Thank you for joining me on my TED Talk. <laughs> uh, no, we've got a couple of things to talk about. Uh, one thing I want to remind you, we mentioned it last week, but I'm going to keep mentioning it until it happens yeah. because we want to see you there. It's Insomnia 72. Yeah, yeah baby. Uh, yeah. We, we are going to be at Insomnia Gaming Festival I-72 on the 30th of March. Woo. We will be attending for the Saturday only. And we will be doing a meet and greet session during the day and then a special live show in the evening. What a special live show at Insomnia. A special live show <laughs> at Insomnia. So it's going to be epic. There might even be some special guests. We don't know yet. We need to organise it. Uh, <laughs> but hopefully there will be. Um, you can uh, keep those peepers peeled. <laughs> Uh, it's, my, it's my new thing. Don't I'm gonna do it every time. Don't don't Rhiannon like loves it. Workshop it. It's like that like, don't like, it. like just fall out. I don't, I don't like the visual of peeling no. your eyes. Peep okay, those let me peepers. Just, let me just peel. pick your brain for a second. I hate it. Pick your brain. I hate that. <laughs> um, keep those peepers peeled on our social media and Insomnia social media this week, maybe, for more information. Uh, or is it next week? Is the email uh, there? Because I have checked that. Yes. Um, no, I don't know. Basically, what's going to happen is tickets are going to go on sale. Um, our evening show is going to be a ticketed show. However, there will be, a, I believe, a 24-hour pre-sale for people who already have tickets for Insomnia who will get to buy them first. So if you already have an Insomnia ticket, then you'll get to buy it early. If not, you can buy it when... Uh, so a very good night. reason to go and get your Insomnia Absolutely. ticket for Saturday now, because the tickets are available. You can go get your Saturday ticket now, and then you will get that pre-sale for our... I believe we're looking at about twelve pounds for a high rollers ticket. Well, more information should be coming this week yes. slash next week. So keep your no peepers. <laughs> no. Um, peeled. There's some other things to keep those peepers peeled for though, uh, because we have a couple of special one shots, extra streams. Ooh, We've got some extra streams coming up. Um, the first of which, so we're doing a bunch of sponsored one shots in different systems. Um, so the first one we have coming up, which is very bizarre for me because it's a blast from my past of my my previous past working blasting. career. Um, we are playing RuneScape Kingdoms, the RuneScape tabletop role playing game from Steamforge. Games and Jagex Studios are uh, on Thursday, the 29th of February From on our tw 20. Oh, wait, no, it is Thursday. Thank you. Yeah. I have. It's written down! Um, Thursday, 29th of February on our Twitch channel, um, and we're going to be joined by some guests from Jagex for that as well, so they're actually going to be playing alongside us. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, you can check that out. It's going to be a ton of fun. Um, so that is Thursday, the 29th of February on our Twitch channel. Keep, uh, keep your... People <laughs> uh, on our social media for more information like the exact time, but it yeah. will be around about our usual stream time. And then also coming up in the early part of March, the 8th of March, potentially that may change. We'll keep you posted. We're going to be playing the Dune, Dune. RPG. Dune. Um, Dune. By our wonderful friends at Modiphius. <laughs> what the hell? Um, our wonderful friends at Modiphius have sponsored us to play the Dune TTRPG. It's going to be a special one shot with your lovely High Rollers crew. Oh, also, uh, playing that as uh, well. Big announcement here. You guys don't know it, but I'm going to be wearing the Zendaya outfit. This oh, 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 I'm like, Amazing! So I'm, can you actually, I'm can gonna you take loads down? of spice. Can you sit down while wearing that outfit? I don't know, I might have to stand. Just so stand it's gonna get butt cheek. Also. <laughs> just turn around, show off, yeah. show off your butt. It was a great outfit. 
Um, it was a good outfit. She, I'm she just, always is in a good outfit. I'm going to come in the Fremen I'm going to have the little thing up my nose. I'm going to have the blue eyes. <laughs> oh. um, I am Paul Atreides. Um, I'm Space Jesus, is basically <laughs> what I'm saying. The whole thing. Yeah. I'm going to be the bad guy. To really... Tom's going to be a worm. Right. Worm. Yeah. A worm. Yeah, 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 yeah. All worm. But covered in sand. I'm going to yeah, be yeah. Batista. Never covered right. in sand. You could be Dave Batista. I'm be Dave yeah. Batista. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. um, but yeah, so that is coming up as well. So that is Dune, hopefully on the 8th of March. Keep those. Beepers Aww. Beal. <laughs> Hey, I want a new catchphrase real quick. Yeah? No, yeah. don't change it. I'm not going to change it. It's up to you to come up with a new one. A new catchphrase for you? No, for you. For you. Oh, no, I'm not... No, no I like okay. it. Okay, um, okay. I hate it. Good. Oh. So that is it for announcements. Welcome to the wonderful world of Chaos of High Rolls. If you're brand new, what a, what a stream, eh? So it's a good place to be. <laughs> it's a good place to be. Um, that's it for announcements, I believe. I'm going to cast my eyes around. Sure. Yeah, you got sounds one? good. <laughs> uh... Wait, did you not have one? No. You said yeah. sure, like you, you had one. Sure. I said sure as in like that was done. That was it. We're done. It's the ninth day of Chinese New Year. Hi. Yeah. Woo! Lunar New Year, obviously, but also what better way to celebrate Lunar New Year than Patreon? Uh, being a patron <laughs> to us, it's a great or YouTube idea. member, or Twitch sub. Yeah, thank, oh, just big, good shit. Money, yeah. money, give us. <laughs> hey, thank you. if you support us on those platforms and join the Discord, you will get early access to the vods and podcast episodes. Uh, we love you for it, and uh, you uh, make my dreams come true. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. Mm. That's it. Thanks very much for seeing you. No. Uh, we're going to run the intro now and get the episode rolling. Yay. Welcome back to Althea the Dragon Empire. As the sun sets on the bustling town of Ashen's Rest, our heroes have taken on a job for the wealthy Lamplighters Guild. They are tasked with protecting one of their engineers, a halfling woman called Teresa Lavensdale, while she repairs three of the guild's magical lamp posts. However, the task is complicated by the guild rivalries and politics within Ashenrest, as the group are soon harassed by a number of individuals from the Carpenters Guild, who are extremely aggressive towards them. As blades, spells, and teeth are bared, things only escalate. Whilst the majority of the Carpenters Guild are subdued, some are slain, and at least one escapes into the network of alleyways in the area. As Teresa repairs the first of the Everlights, shadowy figures begin to emerge in the plaza, carrying hammers and tongs. The Blacksmith Guild also seems to have an issue with the Lamplighters. And that is where we come back in this week, everybody. We are not going to jump straight into combat. You guys had taken a sort of, you had taken a short rest. Whilst Teresa was working on the Everlight, these magical lampposts that the guild maintains throughout Ash and Rest, um, you had enough time. Some of you tending to your wounds, your fight against the Carpenters Guild members. Um, some of you having been struck by these like sort of bleeding, slashing strikes from their their you know um, their sickles and their um, you know carving knives and, and hatchets and things like that. Um, some of you have taken the time to heal up, uh, but I believe Gruff had taken the time to kind of drag one of these big heavy wagons um, and block one of the alleyways that lead into the plaza. Hopefully, maybe slowing down um, that maybe future waves of these assailants. Uh, assailants, 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 aliens, um, aliens, aliens, aliens. Um, Daisy, you had mentioned you had been searching around. I think you wanted to like search around for I something. I want to do an investigate around, see if I can find anything fun. Sure. <laughs> Before you roll that, we do have one thing to do uh, oh, because oh. we do do them every session. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get one. 
<laughs> anyway, yeah, what are we doing, sorry? That was a really loud Xanthus takes 40 That's points of damage. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Rocks fall, you're dead. No, uh, we do need to do our Crucible of Fate. Yeah, please. Um, I did, I, I sort of jostled with the idea of keeping the fate the same, but I do want to keep it, you know, every every session we roll it and it gets reset, basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, well, I'm, I'm happy to re-roll. Oh, I think we roll it. I failed again. Yes, but I think we're going to keep it. You, is this every time? Every single time. Every time. Well, yeah. that is Two. one for me. Uh, I got a five. That is a success. A one. For, well, they're not successes and failures. No, I mean it's a dice from one. Fate for us. Yes. Luck is on my side today. Yes. Uh, Kimberly. Three. Three is a one for me. <laughs> Chris Trot. Look, we all failed. A one for me. <laughs> oh my god! Did we actually all fail? A two. Wait for oh real. Oh my god! Well, well, this we'll see what Mark gets. A four. Oh. One. You have two. Hey, you're two. welcome, gamers. Do we have two? Yeah, yeah. I got one more. Oh, time. you got oh, one. Yeah. Just remember that. So we are currently operating at a two and four pool of fate. Now remember, there are different ways. I spend them slightly differently to you guys. I can use fate to add to damage. I can also um, use What's fate to. So it's just the PTZ is lined up. So you have just like a slightly longer torso. <laughs> <laughs> I wish my waist was cinched. I wish my waist was this cinched. I'll be honest. Uh, sorry, um, podcast listeners, sorry. but just imagine it. He's got imagine. a real long body right now. It's like a little. I love it. I'm like uh, Jessica Rabbit right now. You know, I can't you know real sleeps in. Anyway, um, yeah. But just a reminder: fate <laughs> is spent in different ways. Uh, you guys can use your fate to boost attack rolls. Saving throws, <laughs> ability checks. You can Thank you, Sam. <laughs> also use it you, to, uh, and you do have a cheat sheet somewhere. Yes. You can also spend fate to do things like, for example, um, as you are investigating here, um, if there is a certain thing in particular you want, Daisy, like you were like, man, a healer's kit, because last time you guys didn't have a healer's kit and some of those medicine checks know. were really yeah. struggling. Yeah. Um, if you were like, rather than risk an investigation roll, because there just might, even if you roll well, there just might not be something here. You can spend a point of fate to just be like, we find a healer's kit, right? Should I do and you that? just narrate yeah. like, you know, this wagon that you're searching is probably yeah. the thing. Considering yeah. mine and Gruff's. Yeah, I'll, I'll expend the fate dice and I'll okay. find a healer's kit, please. Alrighty, no problem. So I will take one of yours temporarily. This does unfortunately put you on one and me on five. Um, so it might be a bit of a high damage, you know, going into it. But also, as you saw last time, some of the enemies might have abilities that cost me fate to use now as well. So that's the thing I'm, I'm building All into right. the monsters. Awesome. That they have abilities that instead of it being like a recharge or a once per encounter, I have to spend fate giving you guys more dice and that sort of thing. Cool. All right. Um, Chris Trump. Now that we have short rested, yes. it's been a full hour, right? It has, yes. Do we have any time to speak to the subdued commander mm. that we manacled? That is a great question. Um, yeah, Lieutenant. They are currently unconscious, so unless you want to try and wake them, but they are unconscious, so there are a couple of things I've got to do. Back here. Little... You currently eight. have... Eight. Well, hang on. Uh, <laughs> so you manacled the lieutenant. <laughs> Um, there are a couple of unmoving dead bodies, unfortunately, of some of these Carpenter Guild members, but there were also quite a few of the others who you knocked out as well. At least one of the other um, sort of more uh, oh, yeah. combat capable, the Enforcers, one of those you knocked out as well, and several of the minions as well. Mm. Um, I kicked a guy in the balls. You did. You did. Real hard. You did. Someone kicked so someone in the head as well. I've got an extra you. hour left of these manacles, so we can keep them subdued for the next hour. Oh, it's not permanent thing you create, that makes sense. So that mattress is gone. Yeah. From the oh, gone. Shame. Oh. Sorry. Um, as a reminder as well, being a short rest, things like your blood fury points, uh, Ophelia reset, your rage ends, any ongoing effects like the armor of oak and thorns would also have ended in the short rest and as well. You use if a, it has a duration. Um, Rowan did a um, song of rest as well, yeah, right? So I've that's been, you can use that. Because I needed that. I was on yeah. low. Yes, I did song of rest. Yeah. That just happens when I'm when short rest. Um, I'm not I quite max yet, but I think I leveled up too. You leveled up, yeah. I remember that. You said it last time. Yeah. Definitely didn't level Maybe up. Maybe twice. Uh, yeah, I think we all sacrificed. No, why am I saying this? You level up twice. <laughs> I'm level 10 now. And there were no strings attached. We will uh, we'll sort of retcon a little bit because I think at the end of the last episode I did have some of the bad guys arriving and setting them up. We'll sort of go back in time a little bit and give you guys, because you guys didn't have time to properly go through your short rest. Um, you, I believe, have currently one, two, three, 
Uh, four, five. I believe five unconscious individuals and then the lieutenant who is currently manacled, right? Yeah, what do you guys sense. do with them? Okay. <sighs> Ophelia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we knock out the enforcer as well. Yeah, yeah that's including that. Yeah, okay. enforcer. Because so they, quite, so quite a few of the minions were unfortunately actually dead, dead. I had nothing um, to do with that. I'm not. I'm. I'm not pointing any fingers. I am. Um, <laughs> I believe you also killed some. I. Yeah, did you I? Did. Yes, you, you did. did. At the start, no, I didn't. I, uh, I used uh, earth tremor. I knocked out three of them. Yeah, and then you, you, you also did, did killed chaos spell. I would only do the first kill. I want that to be known. <laughs> or the first. I, like, this is not about pointing fingers. What I'm saying is that there are currently like six unconscious kind of individuals, yeah. um, including the lieutenant, and one enforcer. So four minions and the enforcer and the lieutenant. Uh, Rowan isn't suggesting these things because Rowan wouldn't think He's a sweet to boy. do these things. Um, however, yeah, you, you deal with that first. You have an hour. Those of you who are resting, um, you have enough time to like, you know, probably drag the bodies, maybe tie them up or something. There's not really a lot of time. If you're kind of resting, you can't do anything strenuous, so. Mm. So would uh, like waking up the lieutenant at least and try and talk to him be a Talking strenuous? to him, uh, I would say that like, uh, unless he does something to like cause a problem, then no, talking to somebody's fine. You can sure. talk to somebody without it being too strenuous. And um, uh, Teresa. Yes. Uh, are they currently? They are for the whole hour. They are working on this light. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, they are engrossed in their work. She has like a little folding step ladder, and she's placed it up against the lamppost. And she's currently tinkering with the magical crystals and elements of the artificer element that makes this lamppost work via magic. So she is she is completely engrossed in that. Um, Teresa. Mm -hmm. Sorry if this is. <laughs> oh, oh yes. Oh, sorry. And she's. You can see that she like kind of has like this big set of gog uh, glasses with all these different lenses. She's like, yeah, oh yes, Rowan, isn't it? Yes. Um. Hello. Hello. Uh, I appreciate the um. Time is pressing, and that we have more coming. Well, I, I have a suggestion. May maybe. Uh, do you really think you think that more are coming? I have a sneaky suspicion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, well, I was hoping that that would be the last of them, but all if, right. If this mm -hmm. were to happen. Yes. I have a suggestion. All right. I can create a version of you that looks just like you. Maybe we could use that as a ruse so that you could continue working on another one, but they think you're working on this one. I mean, possibly. I mean, I, I sort of mentioned this to you before when we sort of first arrived. I mean, I, I can try and work on them, but I mean, it takes me at least an hour to fully repair one of these lanterns. I mean, you might buy me a few more, uh, uh, half a minute or a minute uh, if I try and work on it while you're fighting. But I mean, if you if that's what you want to do, of course. But uh, I, I'm not sure how much time that would actually buy me. Less about time, more about getting your consent to use your image for recreation oh, I mean, purposes. <laughs> yes, yes, I, 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 yes, I if suppose. If I have to make another version of you as a distraction. Yes, I have, yes, no, of course, <laughs> yes. Great. I that's fine. That. Um, yes, yes, uh, uh, no problem. Uh, is that all? I, I, I really must get back. Oh. I, I'm, I've never done this before, so I'm, I'm having to follow instructions, so I, I'm, I'm just, it takes me Oh, no, time. please, carry on. Uh, right. Carry on with the repairs. Sure. Um, Goes back. What should we do? Should we try to find out what's actually happening here between all of these guilds. We could just wake up this lieutenant here, talk to him. It seems like anyone associated with the, with the Lamplighters Guild is hated here. Yeah, we don't know why. Now, we're just doing a job. We're Basically, just getting paid. A question. Go. They didn't want to listen to that. I don't think they care. They didn't want to listen to it, no, but I mean, we Context have this one. Context is important. Hmm. We have this but one. It seems um, like everyone's really, really, really angry, and they said, "You don't understand, little girl." That's exactly it. Me. I want to so understand, I don't think little that girl. So gonna... Yeah, but <laughs> but there's not time to understand if they're being all <clears throat> aggressive. Could this be something that Lord Ignarius might want to know about? That there's this unrest within his own town, these guilds. I mean, if there's open combat in the streets at night time between all these guilds, I'm sure people must be aware of it. I don't know. I'm... I mean, you can see that these, most of these buildings, like, people live in them. They're residential houses. This yeah. one this one is a shop, but these ones on the side are actually residents. And you can probably see, like, the flickering of, like, candlelight and, and light, you know, behind curtains in the upper floors. Um, it definitely does look like there are people in these buildings, and they are keeping the doors shut and the curtains closed uh, is the uh, impression you get. If people were attacked here not too long ago, a different group of people trying to repair these lamps, it's happened before and it's probably not the first time 
even then. My worry is we've accepted something and we don't know which side we've just allied with. I hope it's for the benefit of Ash and Rest. Well, I want to be on the right side. We just accepted a job for money and we didn't think too far much about teams. We didn't think there were teams. Um, I will say that the lieutenant that you have knocked out, I mean, these guys are out cold. Um, unless you heal them with hit points, right. no amount of, like, you know, slapping them around is really going to wake them up. They are, like, unconscious, unconscious. What about some cold water to the face? Um, I mean, because this isn't like they've fallen asleep and they're sleeping. They are, like... They have been knocked unconscious. Like if you got hit by a bus, they are dangerous. And someone injured. splashed water on you, you're probably not going to wake up from that, right? Like, could I search like the bus? lieutenant yeah, just to yeah, see you if can there's pat any, their like, pockets down and... or any like notes yeah. on them that are like, yeah, screw really? these guys. <laughs> yeah, you screw these guys in particular. Yeah, you pat his pockets down. Um, there's no <laughs> notes. There's no like written evidence of like. Go get the boys and go yeah. fight these lamplighters, Avengers. see? Yeah, Avengers. <laughs> There's not any, like, physical notes or anything like that. You do find that um, they have, like, probably, like, you know, I'd say three or four gold in their coin pouch, um, which is not actually that... It's not a huge amount of money. Um, it's probably about right for a skilled worker in, in you know to have that on, on them. Um, they carry, yeah, like a hatchet. They've got a kind of curved, like, wood carving knife, kind of like a something that, you know, a woodcarver might use. Um, they don't... The only thing you can find is they carry a guild signia, um, which is like a pin badge, like a clasp badge, which shows a saw and a hatchet kind of crossed over a tree. Um, and so, you know, indicating that they are a member of the Carpentry Guild. Um, uh, probably made from pewter and brass. Um, there are dozens of scars not from Carpentry. I think Gruff is being around enough to know that you get scars like calloused hands, sure, and this person has very rough hands, but they have, like, scars on their arms, scars on their neck, scars on their lip and on their cheek. This person's a brawler. Like, they, this is, these kind of street fights have happened, and this person seems to be fairly, you know, familiar with that. But no, no evidence or, like, letters or, like, you know, Things like that. And do all of them seem to have all these scars on them? Um, most of them do. I think the enforcer and the lieutenant do. The minions, you get the impression, like, and I say minions, they're called like lackeys. Mm. These are like lower members of the guild that have almost been drafted in, or they're like street toughs yeah. who have basically been told, right, here's here's a few gold pieces, come and fight with us. They don't have the 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 guild badge. So Most of the lackeys don't have the guild badge, but the enforcer and the lieutenant do. Okay. Um, Just a bunch of bugs. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I ask? The scars, I would say, look recent. They're not yeah. old scars. They're yeah. all fairly recent. Oh, right. Give me a medicine check, actually, Gruff. Uh, you are throwing that dice so aggressively you, lately. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I have to look up and I'm just to make, I was trying to say time. 18. 18? Yeah. I think, Gruff, you get a good look at these scars. After moving the wagon and sort of dragging the things around, these are fairly fresh. Like, you think that this, judging by the scars, like, the calluses are old. Like, this person's worked their whole life. But the scars probably only go back, like, maybe a month, month and a half. Like even the oldest looking scars, like... This is a new kerfuffle. Uh, can I just quickly ask Teresa, like... Um, okay, here's the question, come on. Come on Hello, my name is Gruffith. Hello, my name is Gruff. I'm from a little village in Tramoro. Teresa! Uh, 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 yes, and she, she's, and she's like, I, I, I really must continue with the work, but yes, of course. This uh, violence between the guilds. What have the lamplight has done to piss everybody off? Oh, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. This is the thing. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an apprentice engineer. I, I joined the guild a while ago, but I've not really been involved in much. I've mainly been learning and and doing things like that. And I've only recently been brought up to the to the position of engineer recently. Um, and and really, this sort of thing is is not my sort of wheelhouse. I mean, I, I mean, I've heard, I suppose, that there's been some rivalries but um it's, it's not really something i know much about i'm afraid i'm i'm really just 
just a little engineer. Um, you could probably ask Miss uh, Alicia. She might know more. She's she's more senior in the guild than I am. Um, she's a bright eye, so she's sort of our middle rank, I suppose. Um, there's also my 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 direct um, sort of boss, um, the chief illuminator, um, uh, Mr. Goldsight. Um, he's a dwarven man. Um, he's the one who taught me how to repair the lights, and he's the one who gave me this this um, job. Um, uh, he might know more, I suppose. Have they increased the price of lighting the lamps recently? Um, they haven't increased the price of it, but we've been... And she sort of thinks for a minute, and she said, well, we have been making a lot more of them. Um, it used to be that it was only the main streets, and so, you know, it was only the shops and the houses on the main streets that benefited from the lights, and, you know, we charge a silver piece per night, and most people are pretty happy with that for safe and peace of mind of safe streets and things like that. And um, But, yes, we've been sort of rapidly expanding and adding more lights all around the city. And um, I know that the guild also gets a payment from the Duke for the, the... And she points, and on the big walls around the town, there are these huge towers with these big braziers. And they actually kind of illuminate the lands, you know, kind of really make this a beacon. Um, would be very useful were this town to be attacked to have these magical lights and, you know, not have to worry about them being put out and things like that. Um, the, the Duke does pay the guild as well for those, but yes, we've been rapidly sort of expanding, adding more and more lights to the city. Um, the, the head of the guild really has this big vision of this being a city of, a, a, you know, a, a, a grand bright light in, in the province. Looking around this area... Yes. Uh, having seen the radius of these lights before, mm. like, are there just way too many lights here? <laughs> if the, if no, the there's, up... there's just about the right amount. Okay. So as Teresa does this, um, you can probably see, like, the light is... She's As she's repairing it, the light begins to flicker less and is actually coming on full power. Yeah. It's about 40-foot radius of light around the post. Okay. And the way they're spaced out... Is almost perfectly kind of illuminating the whole plaza. Okay, um, so it isn't like they are, but it is illuminating the whole like area, right? Building like, up pointless ones. Yeah, like every house is going to be illuminated. You know, is is going to have enough of enough. Maybe light. they can't get their dodgy dealings done anymore because the other ways are all bright as hell. <laughs> is this um, Rowan? No. <laughs> it's I will say as well, these it's work like... Uh, the alleyway. <laughs> these are like the light spell, so it's 20 feet of bright light and then yeah. it's 20 feet of dim light. So they're, like it still dims out as it gets further out into the outer reaches, but it, it's enough light that it's, it's quite clearly illuminating the whole plaza. Where these two lights are no longer functioning, um, the city is... At, there's enough ambient light in the city that's kind of reflecting down or from the stars that you can sort of see you're not in pitch blackness here, yeah. but the shadows are so deep um, that more than just dim light, seeing these darker areas, looking into them as the sun is now fully set now, and we are at nighttime, these areas are very dark. This is like a next level beyond just dim light. I'm going to call it shadowy. Mm. Uh, these areas are quite shadowy. Um, well, if there's um, nothing untoward with the Lamplighters Guild or these combats, at least... From what you're aware, is there anything you've heard Untoward? Of... No, no, the, I don't think that there's anything untoward. Well, is there anything you know about the Carpenters Guild? I, I'm really not the one to ask, okay. Mr. Xanthius. I'm just sort of an engineer. I, you know, I got hired to do this job and I've been diligently... I mean, normally I work in the workshop at the Pharos, but we... Well, they needed more engineers and, and I wanted a promotion, I wanted to make some more money, and, and so I volunteered. But I'm afraid all this guild politics business is a, is a little bit beyond me. Um, no, I apologise. We are new to this No, of course. I wish, I, wish I had more answers for you. Um, well, we I, still I really intend... must get back to... We still intend to protect you for the rest of the night. Oh, please, yes, it would be good. Um, what, one more question before you get back to work. I uh, do apologise. No, no, of course. Um, you said you're putting up more lights. Who makes the lights? Do you make the lights or do the other guilds erect these structures around the city? Oh, the lampposts themselves? Yes. Oh, no, 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 we, we make everything. So you make everything? Yes, I, I do think that that might be somewhere some of the rival with the Blacksmiths Guild come from because, you know, the, the posts are made from mm. metal and, and the actual casings are all metal, but we, we make it all in-house now. I see, um, okay. Ever since the Blacksmiths Guild got sort of pushed out to the outer skirts of the, of the Grey Forge district. But, um, but yes, no, we make everything in-house. And there is a sort of... Um, <laughs> to sort of explain the magical elements to it. There are these sort of magical ley lines and the lights will feed off of them. It's why I can only repair them at night. Mm. We need the magic to be activated for me to 
finish the repairs. Um, but they sort of have been laid out. The guild master and, and, and the other mages of the guild sort of laid out the, these sort of streams of power that we all feed off. And she points at the larger towers on the walls. They all sort of help funnel the, the energy into the city, into the town, and then we build the smaller lights to feed off of those. I see. Okay. And your and your guild is getting paid by the government to erect these lights. Uh, well, we have permission to build them, and we charge the individual citizens who live here. Um, the duke is is doesn't pay us to do that. That is a, our own enterprise, a, as I understand it. Okay. Oh, I think you weren't here. We went on the day when we saw them. So the lamplighters would go through town, and every house has to pay a certain amount of gold. They were coming out and like, putting, like, they were coming out and putting donations, yeah. like a certain amount. I think of gold. I think you did see it, but you saw it from the tavern, whereas you guys rolled together. Yeah, and it's a I silver coin, it was... basically per per household or per family in in the buildings. So, so it's they, profitable. They have to. So the people who live in these buildings have to pay for the lights. Yeah, it's, it's sort of expected that they pay. Yeah, there's, well, there's certainly nothing enforcing them to pay. Sure, um, or is there? Um, but that's. Yeah. Yeah. So I think letting Teresa go back yeah, to absolutely. her work, like Gruff's gonna kind of huddle with everyone and, and just be like, "This doesn't feel good." No. This doesn't feel right. At what point did it stop feeling good? Was it when we were attacked by all the carpenters? <laughs> <laughs> There's something bigger going on here, and it feels like people are being put out of a job, and we're contributing to that. And I think that is going to be the point where we catch up to where we ended the last episode, and that is when the shadowy figures begin to emerge as the long rest, because you guys did have to heal, and, you know, you've yeah. got the wagon and such for things. Um, did you write down that healer's kit, by the way, Daisy? So a healer's kit has ten uses, is important to note. It's ten uses. That and what was the, uh, sorry, what was uh, the... No, it should be an actual item in the base game, healer's kit. And that's, that can stop, like, the... Uh, if we had the bleeding condition again. Yes, you can spend idea. a use of it to remove one sack of bleeding. Nice. If you get the bleeding condition. Yeah. But yes, um, it is at this point. Um, so I imagine that as you've all been talking, Teresa, you've probably all gathered around roughly where you are on the battle map. You're all gathered around yeah. this far out uh, Everlight, mm -hmm. which is on the far outskirts of the plaza. Mm -hmm. But you begin to see at least a couple of figures, shadowy figures. You are able to see them, like I said, anything outside of a uh, the radius of light currently around the lamppost as Teresa finishes it um, is 40 feet, 20 feet of bright light, 20 feet of dim light. Um, anything beyond that radius is currently what I'm going to call shadowy. So it is dim light, you have disadvantage on perception checks, okay. but also uh, they basically gain the effect of cover. Anybody in that darkness gains the effect of cover because it is really hard to see the details. Okay, of them, right? so a stage between... Perfect darkness exactly. and dim light. Not quite, you can't see them, you can't target them, they're invisible nice. okay. a little bit further. Um, you then see uh, the figures, as I mentioned. Um, you see a couple of them emerging from this alleyway over here. The exact opposite side of the plaza to us, that's good. Yes. Um, and then I didn't add these guys uh, to the last one as well, but another packet of mignons. Mignons. Sauvignon. Sauvignon mignon. Sauvignon mignon. Sauvignon mignon. Five? Yes, it's another pack of five over here. Six. It's a bundle. So eight individual boys. Nine. Ten, Nine three. individual boys. Because you've got it's this. Boys, you do also see oh, a uh, figure with a uh, pointing a crossbow in your direction. On the rooftops. Um, and as they emerge, just as Gruff does, does deliver this kind of like, oh, this doesn't feel right. We've got embroiled in something here. Uh, it is at this point that I need you all to roll initiative. Okie dokie. <laughs> these <laughs> ones, as we <laughs> said last time, these are like, not the, the blacksmiths, right? They, you can, yes. Even though it's quite dark, you can see the glint off. They look more armored. Hmm. Uh, they are carrying hammers. Some of them big two-handed, sort of like sledgehammers. Some of them smaller blacksmith hammers. Um, you can see this figure up on the rooftop has a quite crude uh, looking crossbow, but uh, no, you, in fact, I'm going to say until you make a perception check that you can, that's all you can really see about them. And then the sure. same with this group of minions, these lackeys, they have like uh, little short hammers, um, they've got like knives. Again, they look more like street toughs who have yeah. been hired on, okay. basically. Oh, they've got an ingot cast. What are yes. they going to do with that? Uh, Gruff, initiative. 17. 17 for Gruff. Daisy. 14. 14 for Daisy. Xanthius. 11. 11 for Xanthius. Rowan. 13. 
13 for Rowan, and Ophelia. Three. <laughs> oh, there's always going to be one. And Tom, can you give me a roll for Teresa, because you still have Teresa, her stats yes. as well, please? Just add dexterity. Uh, 14. 14. Also, because this didn't come up a lot, it was something we mentioned last time, uh, Teresa only has her signature attack and her reaction, but yep. don't forget she can also use the help action to give somebody advantage on a, on a check that she's making. Oh, like okay. Attack. Yeah, that's, so yeah, that's she can good still to give you. advantage to yeah. people as well. Um, if you don't want her to directly attack somebody, you can have her. Yeah, advantage. that's cool. Good call. All righty. Um, so as this is all happening, uh, you do see these kind of figures begin to emerge um, and uh, they're kind of doing that thing of like, they're kind of pounding their hammers into their hands, very kind of gangs of New York mm. and sort of West Side Story as they look over uh, and you see the lieutenant uh, who is going to be the dwarf. Uh, you can see sort of wearing a big thick fur coat, um, has like a, you know, several hammers and tools are hanging off a large leather belt, uh, whispers and you overhear one of the others, uh, one of the enforcers say to him like, they're the ones boss, the ones working for the lamplighters. Looks like they've scared the carpenters off already. And the dwarf just points and it's just like, all right, let's show them we mean business. Uh, and they are going to spring into action, beginning with the lieutenant themselves. Oh, booger, who is going to... A nitty in. little booger. Spend your turn running towards us, Bertie. idiot. Yeah, well, he's going to start <laughs> making his way towards you. Uh, and he is going to uh, bring up a whistle to his lips oh, no. and he is going to use his fate ability, bring in the crew as a bonus action. I'm going to spend one fate. Oh, okay. Uh, so you fate get two. action. Yes. Yeah. He calls in another pack of oh, minions. Oh, nice. Another pack of minions. Just wait till Joker gets here. Gotham is ours. <laughs> it's, there's, a, there's certainly an element of that here. Yes. This this is a little bit of uh, I very much. If you think of the Michael Keaton Batman movies and things like that, Get the out of here, crew, bats. Like, yeah. It's the bat, like, <laughs> ah! like stealth zip lining around everybody. But, but it's just a failure. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, he like blows his whistle and he's like, "Get in here." Take care of him, and he's just going to point in your direction. It's another uh, five boys. That. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. And then uh, he, as his action, is going to take the dodge action. So any oh, attacks against okay. him have disadvantage. Okay. Smart bugger. Wow. Yeah, he's going to prepare himself for it. Um, Looks up dodge action. Very clever boy. <laughs> After the lieutenant goes, we then go to Gruff is going to be the first to act. Uh... I'm going to activate my Armor of Ash and Thorn, but as I'm saying that, I'm going to say to everyone else, I think we should go. We should take the Lieutenant Enforcer and go. Oh, Valentino, handbag. Ran and died. Red lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, someone else reacted. I, I totally missed the joke on that because I yeah. was like thinking of something else. She is fully gone. She's fully gone. <laughs> She's squeaked like a fucking. <laughs> I did. I missed what you said. I, I was like, I don't. Know I you said a perfectly reasonable thing. You did. You right, he did. made the weird noise. Oh, 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 basketball oh, court floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> He's going for the three pointer. Three pointer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a minute? Do you want to take a step away? <laughs> that squeak was the perfect basketball. It was. It was. To me, it sounded like you were doing down with a sickness. No, I could have done that. Well, yeah. That's like, why I thought it was. Well, like, <laughs> next time yeah. you say something, you just wow, wow. I'm going to give a minute. Um, as you say that, Gruff, the only thing is, is as you say that, Teresa, who has finished working on the light, it's like, oh, you can't leave me here. I, I, they'll, they'll. I do, who knows what they'll do to of me? Of course we'll take you with us, but look how no, many I, there are. I've got a job to do. I have. To, this is my job. I, I'll lose my job if I don't complete these repairs. Well, why don't we try and talk to them? We Your might turn. all lose our lives while you do these repairs. Um... Oh. Yeah, I'll step up and I'm going to say to the lieutenant, mm -hmm. we want to talk. We don't agree with this job. They will look over towards you. Um, bonus action. I'd say that, you know, because you've had a bit of a discussion with your companions and things like that, it's probably going to be about it in this That's turn. Good, yeah. yeah, I was going to say. I mean, you could still, like, you know, move if you want to, but yeah, this is I'll move probably somewhere. the limits of how much we can get in a six, six second round. Also, Lieutenant took the dodge action, so he can't hear you. <laughs> Do you want to use the <laughs> Dodging audio. Dodgingly feeling. Do you want to use the mitten one? No. 
because I'm responsible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just broke my skeleton hands to move stuff around. And he anyway, got a made for it as well. He broke it immediately. Anyway, we show, are, show everyone the mitten that we're got made. so unprofessional. <laughs> for podcast listeners, we have skeletal hands to push our minis around, and I have a mitten made for my one. And I just immediately ripped the hand off the arm. <laughs> immediately destroyed it. There you go. That's my story. Um, so you're just moving in front of Daisy. Gruff. Yeah, just a, kind of I don't know. Yeah, like, try to protect it. Central kind of. focal point. Yep, 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 yep. Blah blah blah. Armor of Ashenthorn is up. Oak and Thorn, Oak Ash and Thorn, I don't know. But yeah, he's just. Can I ask to... you a question? Yeah, oh, hello, yeah. What is Gruff feeling right now? Is this like. Are you afraid that you've gotten into the wrong thing? Is there an element of fear here? I don't think it's fear. I think it's more annoyed and, like, you know, he keeps going back to his tenants of, like, protect the vulnerable, meek, and infirm. Mm. And there's just something about this that doesn't feel right. So there's like, a bit of suspicion. Yeah. Can you make a wisdom save for me? But because this is directly tied to, like, your, your uh, you know, the things, your virtues, your knightly virtues that you aspire to, I am going to give you advantage on this saving throw. Mm. No, I rolled two fives. Uh, plus five, ten. Oh, yeah. It's still ten. You say the words, Gruff, and you do mean them when you say them, but when you start thinking, you start doubting, and you start worrying that there's something more at work, and those paranoid elements really begin to get into your mind. And... There's something about it where you can just feel that tension and that paranoia building in you. Um, you gain plus one to damage rolls and plus one to physical saving throws. Okay. There are other effects I'm not going to tell plus you. Plus one to damage mm. throws. Cool. And plus one to physical saving throws, so strength dex con. Right. But I want to say that the, those feelings of paranoia begin to become entwined with aggression and fear and these other negative emotions begin to compound a little bit. You don't need to act on it. It's not like a compulsion, yeah. but Something's role play gruff that like gruff starting to feel mm. not just paranoid, but agitated. Average and everyday angry. Kim. Yeah. Yeah. But a little okay. bit. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm there. All right. I'm like divided by ten. But that's gonna be okay. Gruff's turn. <laughs> Bring it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um after <laughs> Gruff uh, you know, you say that you want to talk and you see the lieutenant is just like I've got nothing to say to you. And then the two minion groups are just going to rush up. They're just going to move. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. They are basically going to come swarming. Oh, no, no. And they take a pillar with them. Oh, sur surrounding Ophelia as well. Yeah. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring <laughs> it. Yeah. She's hungry. It's fine. Uh, do they get to anyone else? Oh, one might be able to get to me, actually. Oh, yeah, the other pack, too. Yeah. They do get into the light. You can see that they are now. These are fully illuminated by the light uh, of the mm. Emerald Torch. Okay. I'm going to spread the out a little bit more. See, because they, they can't reach. So I'm going to spread out a little bit. Nice. All right. So we're surrounded now. They are basically, you just see, running from the alleyways. Kind of imagine, because, you know, obviously this is a battle map, but imagine this is a much more tightly packed, kind of very um, Renaissance-style city. The, they just come swarming out of the alleyways, over towards the fountain, and now they're almost coming out of the shadows into the light that um, Teresa has repaired, and they're just brandishing. These are cutthroats. These are, like, street roughs who have been hired in. There's no emblems. There's no symbol of the guild here. This is all you know, sharpened knives and clubs um, and, you know, uh, chains and brass fists. These are, these are gangsters. Um, and they just come dash action. That's it. That is their turn. Okay. Oh, um, they definitely, they almost seem a bit wild, right? They just come running and rah, just full of, like, frenzy and adrenaline, pumped up, ready to fight. Um, after the minions go, Daisy uh, is going to go, then it's going to be Teresa. Can I... Um, I want to walk over to the lieutenant. So start walking over? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Feel um, free to move, uh, or do you need me to move you? Might be easier. How, how far do you want to go? Thank you. Uh, you can move through Maybe... There. 10, 15. Maybe, like, I'll, I'll take my 30 feet and then I'll, I'll sort of... Okay. Um, and it's fine I to get into the, the outer areas of the light. Put, I'll put light on my dagger, okay. which is on my belt. So I won't draw it. I'll just put it, I'll put light on just so that he can see me. Mm. And I will just say to him, I don't know what's happening because nobody's talking to us, but we want to understand and we don't want to fight with people. You say that, you cast light, and this comes from Nim, right? Yeah. The light? Yeah. I expect you to cast light. That's interesting. When you conjure light, what does it look like? What does it's it look like? It's just like a, a, she just taps her dagger and it's just a golden, mm. like a, a warm golden light. It normally appears as like a warm light. golden light. Okay. You are on the very cusp of the Everlight's radius. So you're on the very cusp of its dim light, basically. Can you make a perception check for me? Free action, Not, nothing to do. This is to see if you notice something. Uh, eight. Eight? Yeah, There's, but it, there is just a moment when you touch that and cast that light. Um, it's like when you touch the dagger, like, oh, it's weird. It was like a little tingle in your fingers. You've never had that before, but you don't notice anything, so maybe not a big deal. Uh, you say that to the lieutenant, and he kind of looks at you uh, and sort of eyes you for a moment. Give me a persuasion check. She's trying to look all innocent. Mm. Very innocent, sweet child. Sweet child. Uh, it was an 18 and it rolled over to a two, so four. So four. Unfortunately, he's just like, I'm not falling for your games. I know why you're here. Uh, and he just seems to, he seems to believe that you're, this is like some sort of ploy. You're like trying to trick him or something by like approaching him in this way. He just doesn't buy it, unfortunately. And that's just one roll. Like, it's not to say that that avenue's cut off, but like you, you, you approaching him, like you've got this light, you've got like a glowing dagger. He's just got his weapons out and he does not, he thinks that you're up to something for now um, as you try and approach him. Dice tell stories. Mm, mm-hmm, mm. Can't roll for shit. Very shade. interesting. Anything else you'd like to do, Daisy? So it's probably going to be your action. Do so you have a really bonus right. action? Can I just... Ley lines. Can I sit down just on the down. steps to the fountain mm -hmm. okay. and just... I'll Try just and... put my dagger on the floor and just look at him. Okay, all right. I'd say if you do try and persuade him, if you don't have your weapon and you're sat down, because that's quite vulnerable, your mm -hmm. count is being prone, basically, I'll give you advantage on the persuasion check the next time you, you try and do that, right? If you try and convince him that you don't mean any harm, I'll give you advantage on the saving throw, on the ability check, all right? Sounds good. Um, after this is Teresa. Um, so she is by the lamp at the moment, having mm -hmm. just, the help action, is that with, it's not with range, is it? It's a, no, it has to be next to them, yeah. Actually, uh, no, Teresa's like an artificer. I'd say that she can do it up to 30 feet. Uh, and the help action would just be... It just gives advantage on an attack roll, basically. An attack or an ability roll. check. I think um, she she would stay back and probably hide behind this this lamp mm -hmm. um, and give the help action to Rowan because there is a... I mean, or Ophelia, actually. Ophelia's got a load of people swarmed around mm -hmm. at the moment. So so she's going to help Ophelia? Help Ophelia. Yeah, and like this is this represents like she's using artificer tricks or maybe like, you know, things that she has to like distract them. Like maybe she's picking up rocks and throwing them at these onrushing mm. like guys like get away from her. And you see Teresa is trembling. Like she's quite frightened and yeah. she's behind this thing and she's like, "Oh, Lady Ophelia, Sister Ophelia, kill them. Get rid of them. They're going to they're going to rush us." And like she's panicking basically like as these people rush towards her. Um but yeah. definitely is like, you know, encouraging you to to fight uh in that sense. And yeah, I'll uh, yeah, cycle her around so that she is 
hiding directly yeah. behind this lamppost Perfect. from, yeah. I guess, She's, the majority so, of yeah. the plaza. Uh, it's a pillar on the mini-map. Imagine it more like a lamppost, so it's not going to provide cover. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it's still... But it, it makes sense that she's trying to hide behind whatever yeah. she can. It's, it's a small barricade for now. Sure. Uh, we then go to Rowan. Uh, Rowan's going to step right up to this pack here that's approaching us from that yep. side. Just rushed from the shadows. And he's just going to say to that group, if you take one step closer to my friends, I will defend them, and I will not regret my actions. And I'm going to hold a thunderclap Ooh. that if they step anywhere past me, I'm going to thunderclap. Okay. Can you give me a wisdom saving throw, Rowan, as you are yeah. planning a, a violent action? Sure. That's a, that's a four there, with a wisdom of one, so five. Okay. Um, the same effect that Gruff currently has now also applies to you. You have plus one to damage rolls, plus one to physical saving throws, and maybe other effects in place as well. As you feel, as they rush towards you, like, yeah, you're gonna defend your friends. These are your friends. You're gonna, if they try and hurt them, you're gonna hurt these guys back. Like, there's almost that kind of feeling of like, yeah, you're not gonna let these guys hurt anyone. <laughs> Um, cool. Almost preparing that thunderous force within you. Um, just a small thing. So yes. in the last fight, I um, summoned um, Sarah and my ice diver to protect yes. Rowan. Yes. There's nothing on this that says like when they dissipate. It just says for the day, like or, or until they've done their ability. Until they're done. Yeah. So. I will clarify, it will probably be until a long rest. So if you take a long rest, they'll go away, because okay. then that way you can't just add yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you take a long rest, it goes away, you didn't but use it means that Saren's still active. Yeah, so Saren mm -hmm. is still kind of, I, I imagine Saren's almost perched on um, Rowan's shoulder. Rowan's shoulder. Yeah. Like this illusory. Um, Don't you um, touch the bird. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the bird. Um, fantastic. Uh, uh, so yeah, so yeah, Rowan has that, and that is your action is to ready that thunderclap if they take another step. What if they try and attack you? Um, because that would mean some of them are moving closer towards you. Do yeah, you want that to trigger it as well. It okay. trigger. I'll leave that to you. It's your choice. Uh, in that case, we go to Xanthius. Um, I will. Uh, so I will be provoking an attack of opportunity in the movement that I'm planning here, mm -hmm. um, from the guy directly in front of me. But I want to move a little bit forward and then cycle around to the back of this pack that is um, mm -hmm. now surrounding Ophelia. So yep. that guy will go. For uh, me. They will, and because they are a minion pack, uh, and they uh, you would provoke from one of them, uh, I w I'll make this just a normal attack for him. I won't make this a group attack for him. Sure, okay. Because normally, so the way that minions I'm using the MCDM rules is on their action, when they choose to attack, yep. they can basically, people that are nearby can give up their attack to boost the attack of one of the minions. Right, right So okay. I'm not making five attack rolls, okay, I just do okay. one. In this case, it's just the one. Um, and this wouldn't use their collective reaction, I suppose. No, yeah. no, yeah. This is uh, that is going to probably be a hit. That's a twenty-three to hit. Oh, probably. Um, yeah, but it's only two points of damage. Hit me right in the heart. It's only two points of damage. Um, and I will say to the lieutenant, um, there is no play here. You've never seen our faces before. We were hired today by the Lamplighters Guild to protect the engineer. We don't know what's going on here. Uh, all right, yeah, you say that. Um, the lieutenant, because the lieutenant's also technically had his turn, so I can't converse too much with him. Oh, but yeah. he will look at you and basically say, then leave, leave the engineer and go. What do you do? Uh, well, I'm also going to be, pre be preparing an offensive spell. <laughs> all right, if you're preparing um, an offensive so... spell, can you give me a wisdom saving throw, please? Yes, indeed. I figured that was coming, but, um, oh, wisdom, minus one. 18. 18. Yeah, nothing else. Great. Um, and yeah, the spell I'm preparing, it's a similar thing to what Rowan is doing, is I'm going to be preparing Earth Tremor. Mm -hmm. uh, if any, I guess I can't really say if any of this pack attacks either me or Ophelia, that's a bit broad, isn't you it? Can say if any, if, you can say if anybody attacks my allies, I'm going to cast this spell. Okay. Um, so yeah, it'll be an Earth Tremor, sure. uh, which will hit this entire pack if any right. of those attack. And I'll Alrighty. be concentrating on that. Alrighty. Uh, in that case, uh, I then go to the Enforcers, who are just gonna 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then they're gonna uh, basically start moving up. I think actually they're gonna probably just 
join their boss. So I'm going to just kind of shuffle them around. And they're also going to take the dodge action. Uh, so they're going to kind of move up to the side of their boss, uh, kind of like pounding their hammers, letting the, the lackeys kind of rush forward to begin with. Um, and they're just going to let that happen. Um, and they are still in the sort of shadowy area currently. Uh, so that is the enforcers go. Um, poor Ophelia with a three. You are unfortunately the last at the bottom of the round Hello. as this crossbow man is going to turn and has a target-rich environment. Daisy's currently sat on the steps. You've put your weapon to the side. Gruff, you are kind of surrounded by this armor and you have a staff. I think that they are going to take a shot at you, unfortunately, Gruff, um, seeing as you do seem to be the most biggest threat right now. Um, so from the shadows, and it is this kind of dark shape on a rooftop, it's just going to uh, and uh, it's going to take the shot. Take the shot! Yeah. Um, yeah. I am concentrating on a spell right now. I don't know if that would change his targeting. But... They, these guys aren't really adapted in magic to know what you're doing, really. Sure. They can see you and Rowan, like, conjuring energy, mm -hmm. but they don't know that that's going to go off. Like, they, they don't really... I am also right in front of their allies as well, so it makes sense. You are right there, though. I'll tell you what, I'm going to roll a d6. I'm going to roll one, two is Xanthius, three, four is Gruff, five, six Oh, do you need a d3? Oh, no. Oh, just open God. the bag real quick. Here you go. Podcast no, that's, listeners, sorry, wrong Tom one. has a bag of chaos, which, which he is rummaging right now. Yeah, I've got a D3 in here. Uh, no, I don't. Yes, I do. Here you go. Here in rummage. You're welcome. I'll post a picture of this no, in Discord and on like my Twitter. That. Like oh, I hate <laughs> this, Tom. This is horrible. It's a D3. Ah, nice uh, that's disgusting. Isn't it? That is the D3, isn't it? it's kind of cool that it's an actual D3. Yeah. yeah. Right? Give it that. Because it I, works. It works like a D4. I actually think that one's legit. It's kind of legit. It's pretty <laughs> legit, right? Well, it's three. So actually, right. I think you're right in that they can see, because you are concentrating. When you concentrate on a spell, you are doing somatic components. Yeah. Well, does Thunderclap have any uh, somatic components, actually? Somatic components, yeah. probably. So it's normally listed as S, it's like SMV. Mine S absolutely does. It does. Oh, so you are yes. kind of like swooping your hands or you're doing some sort of gesture. Well, we'll it is okay. obvious you are casting a spell <laughs> and the mark, yes? Seven will protect and take. she takes the hit. Okay. On a successful hit. On a, I was going to say, you want to wait until I, I roll it because then you, you know, you use it. Um, okay. All righty. So it is going to be a 15. Yep. So that would normally hit. Um, so Saren intercepts the bolt. This does have an extra effect, which is going to still take effect. Uh, so rather than damage, so Saren intercepts the bolt um, and it kind of clatters to the ground before it hits you. But the marksman taking that shot is kind of sending a message to his allies in the guild that Rowan is marked uh, and that they should they should take Rowan like, out. This huge UI. <laughs> <laughs> a big um, target around you. <laughs> but yeah, you are marked until the um, start of the marksman's next turn. And that means right. that they have advantage on an attack against you. Yeah. Everything that any of his guild allies. Mm -hmm. So the lackeys don't count, but uh, the enforcers and the right. do. Okay. 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 I just love the visual of like the bolt flying <laughs> with Rowan and Saren just like with a cry flies just directly into Well, him. I imagine like, almost like a fish yeah. in the ice. It snatches yeah. the bolt out of the air and phew, but it's enough to tell the allies like. Okay, so it's it's right. not Saren takes the hit. No, no. And we literally see a bird die in front well, it's of us. Which also is a spirit. She's spiritual. Yeah, yeah. I keep yeah. saying every week. No, I know, I know that, but like. Illusory. The illusion it's an illusory of bird. a bird being hit by an arrow, it's a bird snatching the arrow out of the And then the it sky. sort of carries it away and then it dissipates. Yes, and yeah. The that's arrow. cool. Can I make you Very back? cool. No. Okay, it's mine now. Can I that's, see it? Can okay. we see it? Can yeah. the side of the table see it? Well, actually, Just... I'm going to have Rhiannon go first, and then, because yeah. if Rhiannon starts laughing, I, it's her turn next. Okay, yeah, thank you. So, yes, Ophelia is up as the last in the round. Um, Ophelia was going to try to take a more diplomatic approach, but they've just taken a shot at Rowan, so I think her mind has changed. <laughs> so you hear oh, the God. kind of and then as yeah. uh, Saren flies past. Yeah, it's up to you. It's, it's yeah. your, tu your turn. Ophelia's going to see that, look to the archer on the roof, look to the, uh, the lieutenant. We just made a big mistake. <laughs> She's gonna rage! That's nice. All right, mm -hmm. we see the yeah. veins kind of bulge, the teeth elongate, ah, blood Heart fury. Blood red light. Do, 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 do. The ing. Uh, look at me. Whoa. I'm gonna whiff this so bad. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> look at me whiff this. Check this out. She's gonna get her whip out with her gauntlet hand, <sighs> try and whip the one of the closest whip. guys All right. towards her. You're making this reckless? I'm gonna have to, because I whiff that bit bad. 
There we go. 16. 16 hit. will hit, yeah. Uh, roll full damage for me, and you will gain a Blood Fury point as well, because you're attacking a, a new Blood target Fury. as well. Blood Fury point. Um, roll full damage, because it is a minion, but you might be able to do over damage. Mm. Five total damage. Is that with your rage bonus? Yeah. Okay, uh, so the first guy just drops. Uh, are you making this non-lethal, or is this a killing blow? What kind of damage does a whip do? Uh, I, I'd say the blood whip is like a slashing damage. Yeah. I'd say. It's like, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say that because it's kind of like a blood whip, you could make it non-lethal if you want to. Uh, hmm. I'll make it lethal. I'm sending a message. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it lethal. I'm sending a message. Wow. All right. The neck. So yeah, it literally slashes this dude's neck, <laughs> and he stumbles to the ground. Um, can you make a wisdom saving throw for me, please, if you mm. want? 20, unnatural. 20, yeah, you yeah. I mean, this is, you're just in your rage. <laughs> yeah, you feel fine. Raging, Yeah. feel fine. I'm always yeah. in my lane. <laughs> um, so seeing their companion go down, all the lackeys just immediately are like, right, if I can kill them now, kind of like really rush to it. Um, Xanthius, I forgot as well, with the marksman's bolt, uh, you did say if any of them it attacked your group, allies. It was the group around you. You specifically right, wanted that yeah. group around you, and I assume the same for you, Rowan, as well. All right, no, no problem. Um, in that case, yeah, we jump up to the top of a brand new turn with uh, the lieutenant. Lieutenant. Yeah. Walking up to Daisy. Daisy. David. Yes. Yeah, he's going to walk up to Daisy. Um, seeing you with your kind of like thing on the ground, he's going to look at you, kind of looks up, isn't going to attack you. He's going to look at you, look towards Ophelia, who has just killed one of these lackeys, and just say, I'm going to give you a chance. He was Scottish. I'll give you a chance. You can leave. You clearly don't know what you've gotten involved in but he points at Teresa. But we're taking her back with us. You and your friends can leave, but we want the engineer. I can't let you do that, though, because she's another human, and we can't... She's not done anything wrong. <laughs> we'll see about that. You've gotten... They're up to something, and I think she knows. Last chance. I have an audience with the Duke tomorrow. All right. Mm. We can talk things through without anybody getting hurt. That causes him enough pause. I'm not going to take an action with him. He's just going to do- take the dodge action. Like, prepare himself to defend himself, but he's not going to take any offensive action. He's going to look at the two behind him and just sort of gesture for them to come closer. Um, <laughs> The, the, the thugs that he's paid, he's like, mm, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the rabble. The rabble are going to do what the rabble do. But he, you seem to have maybe intrigued. You've piped his curiosity. Peaked, um, peaked his pot curiosity. Yeah, Thank it's you. Been piped. Yeah, it's been piped. It's been piped. Good, cool. Um, Lieutenant. Yeah. Uh, so we go to Gruff. Uh, I think his brain, mind, whole, uh, filling with all this anxiety and anger and aggression. He's going. Just imagine, like, any negative emotion that Gruff might have at this moment, just level it up a bit, right? It's my yeah. suggestion to, like, anybody who's had that effect, level up any negative emotions that you currently have. Yeah, the insecurity there is, like, is this right? This really mm-hmm. feels wrong. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to turn towards the group of uh, goons that are uh, interacting with Rowan, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm going to try a daunting roar. Cool. Um, so, okay. what's the uh, ra- uh, range and stuff on this? Uh, I do need to move up next to Rowan. Mm-hmm. Yep. It is ten foot. Doing that. Yeah. Uh, Doing creatures right of there. my choice within ten foot. <laughs> Got is, a little is, bit. <laughs> is there a way I can do it that I can catch as many of them as possible without? So you were. So you were here. Yeah, I've yeah. got thirty-five foot movement. And it's ten feet around you. Uh, yeah. You would be best going. If you go here, yeah. then you'll catch uh, two, of two of them. Oh, ten feet around ten feet, you, right? Yeah. yeah, so you catch all of them. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go there. Well, I do diagonals, I don't care about Pythagoras. Yeah. Wow. Overrated triangles, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> well, okay, I guess we're being cancelled today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot about you. Um, and this is a 
Wisdom saving throw? Wisdom saving throw 13. I am gonna, I do have to make this individually even though they're minions, but I'm gonna do this. Uh, so 13, first one, uh, is a failure. Next one, failure. Uh, the third one, which is the one right next to you, succeeds. And then the two behind him, failure. And then Hoodman succeeds. So three of them fail. That means they're frightened, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Cool. Uh, you see the terror in their eyes as they look towards this bellowing... And you see three of them just immediately terrified of you and that fear is mingling with their aggression and everything else and this storm of emotions is in them. Two of them manage to kind of keep their heads and now look at you as this potential threat um, towards you. But yeah, three mm. of them are now affected and that's frightened until... I think it's only until the next uh, turn. Until the start of your next turn. Uh, where the fuck did it go? Probably right. It's um, pretty good. They'll have some, to sometimes it's like a until minute. Until the end of my next turn. Until the end of your next turn. Good to know. All right. Oh, so that means that, that they yeah. cannot move closer towards you, and as long as you are within sight, they have disadvantage on any attack rolls. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm gonna strike out with my staff at. With, uh, the one that failed that was yeah, nearest. Directly in front of you currently on the minimap, yeah. So there's uh, one right in front of you that is in the middle. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, make the attack, and then I'm going to need a wisdom saving throw from you. 17 to hit. That hits. Uh, roll uh, damage for me. Six points of damage. It's enough to. Uh, are you trying to knock him out? Knock him out. I'm not doing lethal damage. Right, cool. I will keep track of that. Did he just attack you? <laughs> well, also, before that, I need a wisdom saving throw from Gruff as you uh, did attack. Yeah. I just, uh, mm. uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, no, hold on. Oh. 14. 14. Um, yeah, even though, yeah, you feel that these kind of negative emotions like rising in a storm and you, and these kind of aggressive actions, but yeah, nothing changes. Um, that technically would have been a seven. Point Seven points of damage. damage. No, it's good but... to know. Not enough to cause any over damage, yeah. but good to know. Good to, good to remember as well. And then I believe, yeah, Rowan, your thunderclap goes off. Does it? Oh, no, they didn't attack you yet. That's right. Um, good point. Uh, Gruff, anything else on your turn? That's Murder, She Wrote. That's all I can do. All righty. In that case, we go to... It is then the minions go. Um, so the three who are frightened can't get any closer. This guy can. He's going to kind of step over his fallen comrade. Oh, yeah. Um, and, yeah, he does look like he's about to attack Gruff, so do you want to get that thunderclap off? So they all basically move at the same time, Jeez. right? So, Hi. yeah. Jeez. Yeah, Rowan turns around in the twerking position. Yeah, and you see this guy, the one who's not frightened, like three of them are like terrified, um, but you see one who's not frightened comes up with like a knife and it looks like he's gonna try and shank Gruff while the others are kind of distracting Gruff. I warned you. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a con save of 13, please. Con save of 13. First one fails. Everything in range, which uh, is five feet. Yeah, and uh, and this deals damage, right? This is just a straight damage. This will be effect. damage, 1d6, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, uh, these guys are minions, so actually, yeah, this is just, yeah, it's gonna hit all of them. Um, three of them do take half damage, but I don't think that's gonna matter because these guys are minions. Four. All right, Poof. is this lethal, non-lethal? Non-lethal thunder? Yeah, I'd yeah. say thunder can be non-lethal, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you knock with, uh, if with I rough to, staff. With my failed wisdom to... Yeah, 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 you can still, t you're not under any kind of compulsion, I just role play, imagine, imagine that your negative emotions are being sort of enhanced right okay. now. Yep, yep, yep. Um, really? uh, no, four of them. You yeah. just watch as, yeah, Rowan, is this like a strum on Sosananto, or is this it's like a, a clap? It's my ass cheeks. <laughs> you did say. Yeah, it is the claps of my hands coming together. It can be your ass cheeks if you really want it to be. No, that's not where the geometric patterns are. Right, okay. So you Otherwise just, it would. Otherwise. Slam your hands together, up. ripples out, and you just see this wave of thunderous concussive force just knocks the four of these guys that were looking like, even though they were terrified, they looked like they were going to try and pounce on Gruff, and yeah, just slams them to the ground. They're out cold. Are you okay, Gruff of, of tomorrow? I feel better for being here with you, friend. Uh, and that was uh, technically on their turn, so that isn't even your turn. Um, I am going to, however, have uh, a bunch of them now take actions on the other side. They're about to attack, are they? Uh, yes, they okay. are. Okay, well, luckily, I do have geometric patterns on my ass. Yeah, they do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just arrows. Yeah, so I'm going to be like uh, like Mario. I'm gonna One does take a step away from you. I'm um, going to butt stomp the ground. But you can't use your reaction because you're using your reaction to hold. That's fine, because um, Earth Tremor <laughs> is uh, 10 feet, <laughs> so... Just get all of them. Yep, all of them. All of them? Um, so they make a dex save, just 12 to beat this. 12. But this does damage, right? 
It does damage. Yep. So I will do a wisdom save as well. No. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Well, uh, and is this lethal? Uh, no, it's uh, again, it's uh, the, the bludgeoning damage, so okay. it can be non-lethal. All four are knocked out, unconscious. Nice. God damn! Uh, as this burst, of, hey, this is what wizards are meant to do, right? Is like big AOEs and like doing things like yeah. that. Yeah, nice. So you just watch as, yeah, four of them are just ripped, the cobblestones in the ground slam into their bodies, knocking them out. Cold. I imagine those um, two like blast off at almost the same time. Yeah, and then wisdom saving throw, please. Uh, I got a twelve. A twelve. Uh, which I, it's probably not. It feels really good. Like, mm. there's like, mm. you know, why are these guys attacking you? Like, you need to teach them, like, that kind of, like, that those aggressive feelings that conjure the spell. Um, any kind of sense of, yeah, any negative emotion, anger, fear, uh, jealousy, paranoia, any of these negative kind of feelings are slightly enhanced. You have the same effect, plus one to damage rolls, plus one to physical saving throws. And any other, and there might be other effects involved as well. Yeah, I mean, I was, was going to say to Ophelia, try not to kill this one double O O, <laughs> triple O, I guess. <laughs> oh, Ophelia, oh, oh, oh. Um, but no, I. Uh, that, oh, it's not even my turn, is it? No, that was a reaction on their turn. Reaction. They, yes. they, they, they went, they went step up, and you, you slammed Boom. them down. Reactions. Boom. Yes. So uh, they, they take their turn, and there's a thunder wave and an earth tremor yeah. on either side. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sucks to be them. Oh, uh, Dolby Atmos up in this bitch. And then uh, it would go to <laughs> Daisy, Daisy, and Teresa's turn. Movie. Yeah. I. I'm still sitting on mm-hmm. the steps. Of yeah, this dwarf's fountain. like looking down at you, like you're kind of like, yeah, having this conversation with this dwarf. I'll just like look both sides and go, well, I mean, now that they're dealt with for now, um, have a seat. And I'll just pat the ground next to me. <laughs> he, he just shakes his head. He's just like, fine. Tell me more about that. You have a meeting with the Duke? We do. However, I just want to point out that that. The little, that little artificer over there, she's not even been with the lamplighters for long. She doesn't know anything. We've already asked her. He looks over, it's like, whether, even if she doesn't know anything, she's valuable. That's not the way to get anything done, though. <laughs> he just, he rolls his eyes, like, very naive. Why don't we save you a spot in the line and you can talk to the Duke about all of this mess. He will say, young miss, do you not think that we've tried? I'm interested that you have the Duke's ear because maybe, just maybe, if outsiders can get to people to start thinking, that might have value. But we've tried to speak to the Duke. The lamplighters are wealthy. They know how to prevent certain word reaching his ears. Can I bring my friends over to talk without harm? He will say, he'll like look up towards the rooftop and he'll hold his hand up. And he'll say, we'll be keeping our eye on things, but we can talk but he is going to gesture for the others. We're going to pause combat. Mm-hmm. We're not going to yeah. come out of combat, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. but we're going to pause combat. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to make it very clear. These boosted negative emotions remain in play. Mm-hmm. Rage and things like that, I'm going to leave that up to <laughs> Ophelia to decide how that manifests, but uh, I'm going to have it so that basically, unless you guys do anything different, like these two are going to basically come on either side, this guy with the crossbow, you can see loads a bolt and keeps it aimed um, and is aiming probably towards Daisy at this point. Like, and you can see these three have kind of got Daisy surrounded right now and this marksman thing. They are all gonna ready to action. <laughs> like they are gonna, they are willing to talk, but if any of you, they, they look like they're sitting on a powder keg, right? They are mm. tense, their muscles are bunched. You can see that these, this crew, if, anybody does anything aggressive or violent towards them, they are going to fight. And that will probably, there won't be any more talking. They'll just fight you, all right? Um, But they are going to hold the combat. So I'd say that you can move, but any sort of action you need to declare. We're going to jump out of initiative for now. We'll we'll pause it on Daisy's turn, right? So we'll have Daisy take her turn, 
and then that will be where we kind of pause the combat. Um, but yeah, they will kind of bunch themselves up. You can see that there is a um, like a very dark-skinned uh, halfling, not a gnome, halfling, uh, a human man with a big, tall, double-handed hammer. The dwarf uh, is a dwarf man. Um, and then, yeah, you can't really tell much detail about this shadowy marksman up on the rooftop. Um, Rowan has been attempted hit at by the crossbowman. Mm -hmm. So he's going to walk very gently mm -hmm. next to Daisy mm -hmm. and stand in the trajectory of the bolt. Well, you can stand next to her. You can try, because, you, you know, from the angle, you can try and stand. I'm just going to, yeah. Rowan's going to walk over looking up in that direction. Yeah, sure. Kind of making it clear that he is yeah. not going to allow. Anybody else want to move anyone? Uh, Gruffith will walk and stand the other side of Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this this is very much like a gang's squaring off against each other, right? Yeah. This is like with a fountain behind them. You can hear the little bubbling trickle of water coming from the the fountain, the well. Um, the the three of them, the the blacksmith standing off now. Rowan and Gruff, the two biggest pun members of the party, with little Daisy in the middle. Um, and then you guys are yeah squaring off basically. And whatever. I don't know if you had a place where you were going, Ophelia, but I think wherever <laughs> you're going. I was going to go like the opposite formation move to you, I suppose. Like if you're going off to the side somewhere, I will, yeah, yeah, be on the opposite yeah. side almost Cooking to your fingers bolster. at the same time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to flank on the side of Rowan. I'll uh, move up to him. Okay, I'll probably be up on this lake. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's like a fountain. It's not really anywhere to stand up. You would be sort of either on the steps like this, or you could I could go just around go around the side, yeah, yeah. So if. Uh, Almost not not like surrounding them as such, but yeah. like you we've, got, we've got our side of the plaza, they've got their. Side you're kind of, of like plaza. leaning on. You, know, you could like be leaning on the Cash. fountain, maybe a little bit, or sort yeah. of put your foot up on it to the casual. side, a bit more casual, yeah. but definitely ready to strike Flash if you myself need to. In the water a little bit. Yeah, um, Teresa is going to stay. Well, in fact, actually, Teresa will basically move round our controller at this point. She will move round, and she's like kind of. Not making her way towards this <laughs> other light, but she's kind of like, oh, should I? Um, I don't know. I mean, so given she, like what we heard finger. them saying, I'd almost say to her to like Stop. not come out yeah. right now yeah. because yeah, she away. will gladly hide yeah, behind exactly, this yeah. barrel. Especially um, because there's an archer on the rooftop. Yeah, like, she will. Yeah. She will basically take full. Like she will get under the little wagon. Yeah. She's yeah. like, okay, and then she like, oh, and she's like, like hiding under the like, little wagon. Almost like as I'm walking past her, like put a hand to sort of say get low or whatever yeah. or hide, rather than like yeah, sure hide, get get low, um, <laughs> short shorty, get low. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, she's a halfling. I've heard that before. Um, um, I think so, um, are we able to just talk now? Like, like I said, pausing combat. Yeah, yeah. You guys can talk, you can move around. If you want to do anything else, you can do. And if you want to try and do it subtly, there'll be a sleight of hand. Sure. To try, if you if there's like, I want to cast this a spell is, without noticing. This, this is a GD standoff. Stand -off. <laughs> it, it, this is a bit of a standoff. You especially right. don't. <laughs> I, I, I would. He's your first. But also, I want you guys to play your characters, yeah. right? Like, if you feel that, like, yeah, to be honest, my character would like act, or if you think they're gonna act, like, if you guys want to make insight checks to be like, mm. do I think they're about to like attack us? Like, I want to get the because if they change their mind, they right now they might be able to get the jump on you and get a surprise round, right? Because they'll just act. Um, I feel like Ross is gonna say something, right? Yeah, I, I yeah. think that as I was walking, like, as I mm -hmm. get next to Daisy, I'd kind of look down and be, like, "You're right, Daisy." I was just telling our friends here that we have um, a, a place in line to meet with the Duke tomorrow, and maybe that would be a better avenue for discussion. You'd be wise to listen to her. Why, why would I be wise to listen to her? Because it's the best chance you have at sorting whatever this mess out is. A bold claim, considering you don't know what the mess is. We've been asking, and no one's telling us. So maybe if you tell us, we can make the case for you with the Duke. But I'm getting a bit fed up of no one telling me what on earth is going on here. I eyes you up. Eyes you up and down. I'm gonna make an insight check about you. Can you give me a intimidation? Is this heightened at all from the emotion or? I'd say you get a plus one. Okay. Good. Eight, nine. Eight, nine. And looks you up. Doesn't seem phased by the anger. This dwarf kind of stares you down coldly, lets you kind of burn out. He just smiles. I know how to deal with a hot blade and a hot temper. 
You're clearly not with the guild. You're mercenaries that have been hired. The carpenters have been dealing with this longer than us, so it's no surprise that they didn't talk to you. We've only recently become involved. He looks over to where Teresa is. You said that she's not been with them long. She's terrified. Looks over. All right. The Lamplighters Guild are wealthy. They get money from the Duke. They get money from the wealthiest citizens to install their lights. And that was fine for a long time. We left them to their business. We did ours. We work on the barges. We work on the buildings. The Masons tend to get most of the inner city work, but here on Riverside, we tend to hold the hold the keys to buildings and things here. And we work on the barges, important trade. Uh, sorry, that's the Carpenters Guild. Uh, I'm getting, my guild's confused, mm. apologies. <laughs> Being the blacksmiths, our work, cauldrons like weapons and they like armor, and so we had a lot of good work. And then people started to complain. Oh, the smog from the foundries, the tanner smells, all of this. So we got pushed further and further out to Greyforge and outside of the walls. At first, we thought it was fair enough. Blacksmiths, you know, forges, tanneries, they make a smell, they make a lot of noise. We could understand it. And then we found out that it was the lamplighters who'd been encouraging citizens to complain. It had been the merchants led by the Merchants Association, encouraging people to send word to the Duke that maybe we should be outside the city walls, cleaner air, nicer sound, that sort of thing. And then the lamplighters started installing lights in other districts, not just around the main plaza, not just in the main thoroughfares, but going out to the residential districts. And they don't force anyone to pay, but it's encouraged. Again, we weren't in a position to challenge them. The Blacksmiths Guild doesn't have as much influence as the Lamplighters or the Merchants or the Masons. So we let them be. And then things started to happen. Whenever the Guild put up a new light, something changed. It's like people just got angrier quicker. They got frightened or paranoid, started bickering with family, with friends. And we can't prove anything, but it didn't happen until the lamplighters installed those new lights. Out of interest, um, um, this isn't Xanthius talking. Sure. Like, um, now that things have quietened down, I think everyone has co almost collected themselves. Is that emotion still he said it was still there. It was, it's still there still now. There. I'm just wondering if there's, like, if we're standing here tense, is I almost want it, to... I almost think. more, that tension is not going away. It's being elevated by these, this, this feeling. Like It was only when she fixed the light. Well, I know, I just, I just mean um, at the mention of, you know, things change when they... It, this guy could be lying. Could be. But how do you go? No, this guy's not lying. Are we just Maybe on, he's waiting for more reinforcements we're on to arrive. The edge of it we're now. just on the edge. Mm -hmm. Okay. At that, can Gruff kind of speak up and say, I'm feeling something. Can we just. This is going to be so weird. Can we try something for a second? No, no malice. Hands up. I want to carry on this conversation out of the range of that light. Yeah, he'll like look over you and say, He'll like take a few steps back, basically like back off a little bit, back off into the shadows. Like yeah. sort of allow you guys to kind of step forward. Yeah, so are we out of the range of the light now? Yeah, I'd okay. say, well, even if I haven't moved you exactly out of the range, mm -hmm. we'll say that it's enough. Um, that influence is still there. Are we in, are we in like I said, and it, it's, it's influencing negative emotions. So like even paranoia, like if you think that there's like I said, for all you, I, I'm saying this as this character, and maybe as no, a DM know, you yeah. think like, oh, well, the DM's giving us plot. This guy could be lying, for all you know. You don't um, know. Uh, is, there, is there anything different about Daisy's light, though? Like, is that changing anything? Make a arcana check for me. 
Okay. Because I Arcana think, or perception? I think for me, maybe I don't necessarily 100% believe them, but if, if I am still feeling this anger and this rage, which is lingering more than usual, like, I don't know, my yeah, hand it doesn't is even still almost It doesn't kind even necessarily have to be anger and rage. This could be just like paranoia. It could be yeah. almost, it could be arrogance. Any sort of negative emotion or yeah. like the feeling. Well, I think or, for Xanthius, mm, I am. You know, your characters. I am. <laughs> Uh, keeping trying to keep a hold of my emotion, mm. maybe more so than most, sure. um, and trying to be more aware of any changes. That is a 19 plus my arcana. 21. Mm. 21. <laughs> Just before I come back to you, yes, this yeah. is going to be a big thing. Um, Ophelia, Rowan, Daisy, is there anything you guys are saying? Is there anything you want to do? Is there anything that your characters are interested in that you want to roll? Because obviously we've had you know people talking, I want to make sure everyone gets a, a fair bit of time. I think Rowan is just more uh, questioning his own thoughts mm -hmm. at the moment, and like, mm, I do feel a bit strange. Yeah, uh, and he's just yeah. I think, I'd say that now it's been pointed out. You can feel like maybe there is a bit of an influence yeah. going on, but it's it could be nothing. It could just be like, oh, it could be the adrenaline or something like that. But there's definitely something. So feel a bit off. Yeah, Rowan yeah. is feeling more focused on ensuring that no one's in immediate danger. Mm -hmm. So he's just focusing on that rather than dialogue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Ophelia, Daisy, anything from you guys? Um, Ophelia's just going to keep looking back to Teresa. Um, looking Can you back. give me a insight check? Yep. Five. <laughs> uh, you can barely see her. It's it's she's in the light, but she's like tucked underneath the wagon. I mean, she doesn't look harmed or anything like that. She just maybe looks like she's trembling, like she's a bit frightened. Mm. If you take Teresa. This would never end. The cycle would just continue. We need the information. We don't know what they're doing, what they've done. And even if she doesn't know, this is gonna sound harsh, but a hostage would be useful. Maybe the Duke knows. We can ask the Duke. The Duke is a great dragon, and I have great respect and faith in the Duke, but I think these other guilds are stopping our concerns from reaching him. What, when he says that to you and he's like looking at you, that's Xanthius, the point when you mm. notice two things. Mm -hmm. The first is, and this is maybe what Daisy missed when she cast light, okay. is her light, where it's touching the edges of the light from the lamppost, it's like two waves. It's like um, you can see that her force of magic and the something in that magic of the light, right. it's like faint crackles or like sparks or cracks like there. Like the, go the golden light is immediately diminishing when it reaches whatever color light well, it's, this is. It's, yeah. it's like it's clashing. Okay. It's, it's not being overpowered or it's overpowering it, but it's like they're from different sources. Mm. And that those two sources are especially violent to one another. Um, okay. Uh, and, and you kind of feel that. Um, the other thing is in your chest, you feel, you notice it now, a similar sensation. There is something familiar about the light the, the feeling and the, the magic of this lantern and what you know you carry is there are similar elements at work here. Not the same, but there are touches of, it's a familiar sensation. Hmm. Um, Lamp lighter heart. Nim mm -hmm. speaks to Daisy. <laughs> Having, <laughs> you know, kind of letting you take command of, like, the, the battle and the situation. But Nim will say, in your mind, Daisy, I cannot see or feel in the way that you can. But there is... Ever since you conjured my light to your dagger, there is something. I, I can't explain it, but there is something unusual about that light 
behind you. And my own power. It is almost as if it is familiar to me. But not the light itself. As if it is... I do not think... There is something... It reminds me of... In the bathhouse. The magic that was causing the water to be aggressive. It reminds me of that. Hmm. Interesting. Um, Gruff, anything like so? Yeah, he's like talking to you. You kind of step out of it, and you do. You do still feel agitated. You feel these negative emotions welling up. Um, but once you step out of the light, it does change. You still have it, but you don't feel it growing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like before, you think if you had stayed in that light and you had kept fighting, or if you had kept feeling anger or suspicion or something like that, if you had kept feeling those negative emotions in that light, you think that it could have like grown and manifested. Um, can I get everybody to make an insight check for me, please? Uh, everybody but Ophelia has disadvantage on this. Uh, disadvantage? Uh, disadvantage to everyone but Ophelia. I'm as well. I said, you help me? <laughs> Sorry, insight. Uh, yes. Or perception. Or perception. Six. Oh, perception. Uh, yeah, either or, sorry. My apologies. Okay. 15, 16. 11. 11 total? 19. 16. With disadvantage? Mm -hmm. Nice. 16 with disadvantage. 16 with disadvantage? Six. Six? Eight. Eight. Um, Gruff and Xanthius. You guys and Gruff, I think it's, I think it's actually very apt because you start going like, you have those th thoughts and feelings, like, if I kept fighting in that light, yeah, I think... And you're like, wait, anger, fear. And then you look back at Teresa, who was terrified, who's still in the light. And Xanthius, you kind of follow Ophelia's gaze, who is the one who is looking towards Teresa. I mean, if I, yeah, if I am look, recognizing something... And you look similar. back and you see that Teresa stumbles out from her hiding place. And she's like clutching her head. Uh, no, they're all going to kill me. They're going to hurt me. I'm going to lose everything. I'm... And she's terrible. She's trembling. And then she looks up and you see her eyes become purplish, greenish flames. Oh, fucking hell, dude. And she just looks over to you all. And that is where we're going to take our first break. Oh, oh man. Come on. This is the coolest shit. Oh. We cool. will see you in part two. Take care. Oh, bye bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> see ya. Oh my god. Welcome back to part two of Althea, the Dragon Empire, here on High Rollers. Previously, our party had begun an engagement uh, working for the Lamplighters Guild. They were helping uh, the engineer, Teresa Lavender. Um, fixing up these lanterns around a plaza in the Riverside district of Ashen Rest. During the attack, whilst they were sort of ambushed by some of the Blacksmith's Guild lackeys, uh, Daisy and Gruff and a few of the others managed to convince uh, the sort of the person leading this, uh, these, this, this gang of the Blacksmith's Guild, who you don't actually know his name yet, a dwarven gentleman, you convince them to sit down and speak with you and try and understand what was going on and what you'd got embroiled in. Having begun to sense that there might be something about these lanterns that was more than meets the eye. And as you began discussing, uh, this dwarven gentleman revealed that there had been some suspicions that the Lamplighters Guild had done something that was causing negative emotions and some sort of malignant magical aura in these lights. And suffering from an intense fear of the combat situation, Teresa, the engineer who had been in the light of the fixed lantern, uh, has seemingly become overwhelmed by something. Um, as she was left in the light and her fear has gotten the best of her. Of her. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the last thing you see is as she stumbles, kind of pushing a barrel and a wagon sort of out of the way. Uh, this, isn't, <laughs> this isn't with like superhuman strength that she's <laughs> launching these things. Um, She doesn't touch them. Oh, oh, oh okay. okay. So you just watch the as the wagon... <laughs> The barrel poof, gets knocked over as she stumbles, like clutching her head as her eyes become engulfed in purple and green and red flame. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. And she kind of stumbles and then she, her body almost goes slack. 
Oh. And it snaps back up, and you begin to see that smoke from her eyes. Her mouth opens, and that smoke begins to billow out of her mouth, and that smoke from her eyes increases in volume until it begins to take a shape behind her. Oh, cool. What is what? that? What is that? What is that? You see a shadowy, it is made from smoke, this purple, green, and red fog and smoke. Um, And it almost coalesces, still connected into Teresa's mouth and eyes, but almost merging from behind her. You see a winged, bat wing shaped. Oh humanoid God. shape, um, and it seems to hold a long blade in one hand and a big clawed hand in the other, and you all hear. <laughs> this one, there was great The barrier weakens. And then it almost seems to see the group of you. I cannot let you know. (laughs) Oh, the throne, the Helian throne. They will never see this coming. Daisy. In your mind, you hear a a war scream. This is not a scream of fear, but a scream of rage. Demon! As you feel Nim overwhelmed with hatred, (laughs) sensing this other entity. Little one, run! And we are going to roll a brand new entity. Shit. God damn, I just wanted to pick up a bounty board quest. Right? Imagine if that was one of us. <gasps> How the... cool. What, the, had it. that happened to us? Yeah. Oh, it'll happen to me soon. What? Bitch. Oh, well, we lordy. That's a little better. Yeah? <gasps> better than what three yeah. we had last time. <laughs> oh I rolled gosh. a one. What? What was what? up, Trump? We're About what you said. Yeah. Oh, yeah, We're was... still rolling in it. <laughs> Everyone else is just move, moving on with their lives. Gruffeth. <laughs> 15. But we heard. Daisy. 14. Xanthius. 7. Rowan. 17. No. Ophelia. 12. I'm going to do uh, one roll for the Blacksmith's Guild. They are going to be part of this fight. Sure. Uh, however, <laughs> I rolled a 2. Uh, Out of interest, they're readied actions to like, wail Shaka. on us. They were ready to attack you. <laughs> okay, yeah. They are they are stunned. They are as stunned they're as taking you. Taking the opportunity. Are. They're just like, you see the dwarf just go. By the science, what is that thing? And it just is totally. This is not what they were expecting. Um, and it does seem like nothing that they've seen before. Like there seems to be something about this particular scenario that has resulted in something unexpected. I am sad to say that none of you are going first. Yeah. <laughs> they're going first. And we're all clumped into a nice fireball position. Yes. Yeah. There are a number of things that happen. OK, here we go. Um, Buckle the, up, lads. The first thing is uh, lifting Teresa's body, the sort of smoke-like creature is going to position itself. Yep on the side of you all, kind of lifting her body up in the air. Her body is just limp, it's it's lifeless, like a doll. Right. Um, okay. And the smoke is like lifting her up, and then it kind of, as she goes, she just stands on her tiptoes as it's hovering up in the air, um, and it points its blade in a diagonal line across <laughs> everyone. Oh, man. And you watch as Teresa's open mouth with the smoke pouring out of it as just this acidic energy Bursts out in a line and hits everyone, <laughs> including all the blacksmiths. Why are you? He's having a I mean, great time. There's a guy on the roof. He's fine. This is true. This guy is the one guy. <laughs> that guy. He's, he's okay. having a great day. He's gonna day. run back home after this. You will not believe. <laughs> I am so lucky. I need. We look up. He's suddenly not there. Everybody anymore. to make a dexterity saving throw, and I'm going to remind you, you currently have two points of fate. You do. I have. Does it have the range to hit me? I am on the furthest edge. You are. 
Oh, it's getting, yes. yeah. okay. <laughs> Those who had that anxiety thing, phys- one plus one to physical saving throws. Dex is a physical saving throw, right? Uh, Dex is a physical saving throw, yes. Okay. Yeah, oh, that cool. is still in effect. Uh, I will tell you now, by the way, the additional effect is you have a minus one to mental saving throws. Right. Um, right. And you all currently only have one stack of dark influence, which is what you were uh, you were accumulating by uh, taking any sort of negative emotion or aggressive action within the light, basically. Okay. Okay, so a deck save. Does my danger sense go off? If you have danger sense, yeah, this is, you can see it coming, right? So as, yeah. as long as you can see it coming, you get advantage, so. <laughs> what does danger sense do again? Advantage. Advantage on right. dex. Nice. Um, you still keep all like your rage is still up, by the way. Awesome. That's still going. You still have your blood fury points. Anybody's effects armor. that armor's still going. We pause the combat. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you guys were talking. Right, I let's see go round. Why you paused it there, um, Mark? All right. Well, I'm just, to make this quicker, anybody who got a DC 13, so if you got 12 or lower, um, you are taking full damage. If you got higher than that, you are taking half damage. Um, I am also going to spend one of my fate points to add an extra D6 of damage. Oh, to cute. This. What type of damage is this? Acid. Oh, acid. I just missed it as well with a three. All right. So that is wow, going to be. I got a 16. I'm fine. Uh, so you take half damage. So those of you who failed, it's 14 acid oh, damage. Oh. Seven acid damage to those of you who got half. Those of you who failed, you are also bathed in an acidic substance. Okay. Uh, am I able to... Body. Is this reducible with Glyph of Vegas? My um, uh, it, runic thing? You, it's the, if it says on when you take damage, then yeah. it is when you take damage. You can absolutely use it. Great. So I have only one spare, so I reduce it by a d6, two. So I only get 12 damage. Alrighty. Um, but, um, yeah, I still am coated in acid, I suppose. Yes. Oh. Um, and, yeah, they kind of, like, fly over. They've used their movement. They use their um, acidic uh, acidic blast ability. And that is going to be its turn uh, as this, uh, this uh, demonic entity uh, does unleash this powerful blast of um, planar magic. Um, okay. Yuck. All righty. Uh, so we go to the next person is Rowan, who is next in order. Oh boy. Oh, uh, I apologize. I have to roll for the blacksmith skills. Fair enough. Ugh. <laughs> well. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me just check that hit points. Side through Bob. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, the two enforcers, the lieutenant does manage to avoid, so it only takes half. Um, uh, so uh, they've taken seven. The two enforcers look very bad. <laughs> right. they, they are like coated in this acid, ah, ah, kind of screaming. Um, gonna put a hand on Ophelia. Oh. Okay. And you feel an energy ripple through you. You hear a <laughs> as owl wisdom flows oh. through Ooh. your veins. Um, so this is enhance ability, uh, and it's going to be owl's wisdom. The target has advantage on wisdom checks. Nice. It's not saving throws. I want to point checks. out. Checks is not saving throws. Ability checks is not saving throws. Oh, I see. So it would be. It'd be like making a perception check like perception, or an insight check, okay. things like that. We need to stand together to fight whatever this is. And um, I will do Bardic Inspiration as well okay. on Ophelia. Oh, thank you. It's time to utilize your abilities. It's an extra D6, right? Extra D6, but you're going to have the motive potential swirling around you as well. And depending on what you do, you can use it to enhance certain things. Cool. And I'll let you know when you do it. Thank you very much. Very good. Save reading it all out right now. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Nice. Um, I'm just going to keep standing where I am. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. That's me. At the end of your turn, Rowan, I'm going to use a villain action. Oh. Ooh. Wait, I need everybody to make a wisdom saving throw as this thing billows with dark power um, and its terrifying appearance may frighten you. <laughs> I'm, I'm all right with being frightened, to oh, be honest. God's sake, he's saving for rolls. You could ah. use your bardic inspiration if you wish oh. and be enhanced. I'm going to 
Again, unless you rolled that bad. Three fate. We do. But you have to add it before you roll. So before you, I know you're quick to roll, but do remember you have three fate available. Yeah. Those of us who have stacks as well, dark influences. You have a minus one. one. Oh, of course. Oh, that might. Uh, You are trying to beat a DC thirteen on this. Uh, Who got got under thirteen? Thirteen is a success. Got thirteen. Was that with your minus one? I actually got got thirteen. Thirteen plus one minus one. All right. I rolled a three. Uh, Graf, I'm afraid to say you are frightened and Ophelia. Six. Six, you are also frightened. This thing's spooky! If you want to use it on this... I'm going anyway. <laughs> Lieutenant does manage to save, but the other two are also frightened. So if you want to use it on this, you can use it to gain uh, hit points equal to the Bardic Inspiration plus three. But you don't have to use oh, it on cool. this. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I would say with a six, even if you roll six, you are not going to succeed. So, um, to so yeah, the Gruff, <laughs> there is something... <laughs> With Gruff, <laughs> you've grown up with horror stories. Things from the deep water. Mm-hmm. Those don't frighten you. There is something... This is this is not a story. This is real. And it just, you know, blasted you with magic that you've never seen before. This is all of those horror stories as if they have come true. And this is something you were never expected to deal with. Right? This is... This is not some bandits out in the woods. This is not, you know, some vault spawn kind of hunting around. This is something beyond this world. And that terrifies you. And I feel you come from a place full of monsters to an extent. You've seen some of the hideous creations of the House of Rot. You've seen uh, the wraiths of the House of Shadows. These things don't frighten you. Faced with this, again, very similar to Gruff, there is something you intrinsically know that this creature is not from Althea, it is not mortal, it is not undead, it is something you have never even conceived of before. It is a demon, and that is a planar entity. And there is something intrinsically frightening about this to you. How that manifests and what you think, what Ophelia deals with, it is magical, obviously, it is a magical fear, but Mm. there is something that just disturbs you to your core. I like to think that with Daisy, maybe this is a bit of Nim's influence, kind of like shielding you a little bit from this. But like you've, you you don't know why, but like there is something about this that you know what this is. You can just feel, you know that this is. It is not fully manifested in this world yet. It is not actually here. It is somehow um, pushing its essence and its its magical energy into Teresa. Uh, and it is a demon. It is a uh, from from the Helian Pit, the realm of demons um, and devils. And it is it is not quite here yet. But who knows if it's it's going to be able to break through? But it is certainly in control of Teresa, and it's certainly got power here. Um, Xanthius, when this magic hits you, that same familiar sensation. There is something, maybe not entirely, but there is something mm-hmm. that connects with this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think maybe for Rowan, this is, you know, you get a flash almost from your accident, your incident, and there is, you know what this is. You can feel that you know that this isn't from Olfea, but that doesn't frighten you. You, 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 you've got people to protect. You've got yeah. things you need to do. That's what I was going to say. I'm rising to the occasion. Yeah, there's more important things. I have. Uh, but that is at the end of Gruff's turn. That it uses its, uh, its uh, demonic presence. Um, we go to. I had a turn. It is Gruff. <laughs> yeah, this, well, it's, it, this is like yeah. a brand new round, yeah, so yeah, yeah, it is gruff. Um, so I'm frightened, so I need to get away. I can't attack. You don't me. have to okay. move away, but you cannot move closer to it, and you have disadvantage on attack rolls. Um. And you get a save ends at the end of turn to get out of the fright. What kind of an action would it be to equip my longbow? Uh, it, it's part of. You can make it as part of a move action, or you can make it as part of the attack action. Um, it would mean. Uh, dropping your staff, though. You wouldn't be able to put your staff... You'd have to either put your staff away and then draw your bow next turn, or you can drop your staff and just pull your longbow out. Or you could use a magic spell, or... Yeah, I'm saving those for when someone gets blasted in the face. Okay. I, d- I don't know if you had, like, a ranged cantrip or something. Uh, like I don't. I have... have shillelagh, yeah. Mage Hand, Shape Water, and Shillelagh. Yeah, shillelagh. So, yeah. Um, you okay. with Mage Hand? Oh, yeah, I'm going to slap it with Mage Hand. Sure. Yeah. Um, no, I would like to... Can I move it away towards the fountain? Mm-hmm. Um, five, ten, fifteen, about there. Mm-hmm. Um, can I put my staff down there and mm-hmm. pull out this longbow? Sure. Well, you're doing that as you're moving. So as you're running, you're, like, pulling the longbow out, you put the staff on the ground, then two-handed, you've got the yeah. bow. 
Um, and then, can I shoot the light that Teresa just fixed? Ooh. You can certainly try. It's a small target, but it's, you could try to. Yeah, it's probably not going to do much, but we'll see. Um, 15 to hit? No, uh, yeah, 15 to hit. 15 to hit? I'd say it hits. Yeah, it's going to be resistant to the damage because it's piercing against like a metal crystal, so. Eight points of damage. So four points of damage. The arrow thuds in and cracks it and you see it begins to flicker. It's not fully destroyed, but it's damaged. Um, and the light begins to flicker. Um, and you just hear. <laughs> Anything else on your turn, Gwen? I feel any better because the light flickered. You get to make a save at the end of your turn against the Frightened, though. Okay. Wisdom saving throw. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I can particularly do right now. So, Wizzy saving throw? Yes. Would you like to spend a fake point? No. Okay. Uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, minus, minus one. one. It's a success. So you kind of shake yourself out of it, like, you know, whatever that is, but you are no longer being frightened by this thing. Oh, but that is at the end of your turn. We then go to Daisy. Hello. So, uh, Nim told me to run, so <laughs> Daisy go and run. Yeah. Uh, she's not gonna, she, she's panicked. So hearing yeah. Nim's tell her to, to run, yeah. she's gonna do what she's told. Sure, sure, sure. So she's gonna go away from it, but seeing that Gruff shot the mm -hmm. light, mm -hmm. as I run, I would like to try and fling a radiant blade at the light yeah. and see if I can... It's up to 60 feet, right? You can throw yes. them? Yes, so if I'll, if I'll so throw it... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, yeah. yeah, you can easily do it. So you want to run sort of like, where do you want to run to? Yeah, that, 15, yeah. 15, 20, 20, 30, you get to about here? Yeah, Yep. that way. Yep, so as you're running, you whoosh, fling a radiant blade towards the light. I'm going to say AC 15. Uh, 18 plus 5, 20. It's radiant energy um, slams into it. Uh, yeah. Um, no sneak attack, but it's radiant damage. That's fine. Uh, nine damage. Nine radiant. Well, radiant isn't being uh, resisted, so it shatters. You see the kind of crystal elements of this lantern, this kind of lamppost, break and shatter, and where the device had been opened up for Teresa to fix it, it breaks entirely, and that whole area is plunged back into, into darkness, basically. Right. Well, not darkness, but shadow. Um, you see uh, those of you who had that kind of dark influence dissipates. Okay. The feelings kind of go away as that light goes out. The creature stumbles for a minute. Like you see the, the fog almost like start to dissipate and then it kind of re-coalesces. Um, the creature is still there mm -hmm. and its effects, like the frightened and stuff is still in effect. But yeah, no more dark influence uh, and that light is now gone. Okay, so all the kind of plus one, minus all of that's, one, yeah. all of that's gone. Yeah, anything, any effect from that is gone. I will bonus action throw a dagger at the creature. Mm -hmm. Yep. As I run. But I rolled a four, so it probably won't hit, so it's nine to hit. Um, it goes to strike the creature, and it, you see that this kind She's of... She's too busy running. Yeah, it just goes wide, slams into the building. Um, alrighty. Uh, so that is Daisy's turn. We then go to, I believe, it is Ophelia. I think she would also, before it, she would, oh. she would say, run to people. Deepest apologies. Uh, out of, so who's gone since the creature? Rowan went, yes. Gruff went, and Daisy went, right? Yeah. Um, who failed the uh, saving throw against the acid? Not me. Not me. No. You, you all succeeded? Yep. All three of you succeeded? I got an 18. Okay, that's fine. Um, it's uh, before you go, Ophelia, it is actually the two enforcers. They did not succeed, and you can see that because they got caught by all the acid, they're covered in like this acidic slime, and it continues to burn away at them. Oh, oh damn, um, okay. They are they. They are not dead, but they look they are bad. Dead. They are like writhing around in pain, like ah, oh, oh, and they just run. They are yeah. gonna dash action. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Eight, I would 10, 15, 20, yeah. 25, 30. I'm getting out of here. I'm never gonna see you guys ever again. <laughs> These two enforcers <laughs> flee the scene. No? Yeah, Daisy Daisy yeah. looks terrified and starts running Kinda. and tells you all to run. <laughs> just as yeah, a, yeah. Just as a point. I really wish I had a light um, to shine in your eyes right now. Just to be like... Ophelia. Are you with me? You'd see demon eyes. Yeah, yeah. Ophelia is going to book it. She's <laughs> frightened. I wasn't sent to be, to be killed with the hand of abominations. And she's just going to 
So when you try to run, this creature unfortunately has reach. Oh, Paris. Oh. Oh. Also got acid. Who? Yeah. Oh, you do have acid. Yeah. Oh no. Six yeah, points of acid damage, I'm afraid, which goes through any resistance from raging. Yep. Um, and yeah, as you begin to run, so you're gonna, so you'd have to run away. Yeah. So you go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. But yeah, this thing swipes at you with its kind of uh, this fog-like sword, or maybe its claw, maybe instead, mm -hmm. um, as it yeah tries to slash you. Uh, that is going to be a 16 total. Damage. That's a hit. hit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. It hits. Uh, that is going to be... My apologies. Damage is actually 45. <laughs> <laughs> Hate to do it to you, Reed. I'm going to spend a fate point to add damage to Go this as well. Uh... You're now up to four fate on your side. Oh, that is... no. Uh, so that is going to be 14 points of slashing, <laughs> half to seven because you're raging. And then okay. two more points of acid damage. Yeah, I'm down. Mm. Oh, damn, okay. So you would actually go down just as you leave its reach. So you are down. Uh, so, actually here. So go down. Does the um, Bardic Inspiration dice do anything or no? So I guess when you go down, it doesn't do anything. It could be used to a saving throw and attack roll. I you, attack right? against you, yeah. yeah. I think it's when you do stuff. Yeah, oh, okay. so there is a type of bard who can use it to reduce attacks, but you are not that type of bard, I'm afraid. I'm not that bard. <laughs> yeah, you watch as Ophelia turns. Um, I will say that that automatically ends the fright on you because you're now unconscious. Um, yeah. But yeah, just as, and you feel this fog almost like claws raking through your back and you go black and fall unconscious. All right, does end your rage as well. Yeah. Um, so that is Ophelia's turn. Yeah, unfortunately, that was a reaction on its part. Um, blah, 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 blah. We then go to uh, the blah, 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 um, marks. Uh, sorry, not the marksman. The lieutenant, I believe, uh, will go before Xanthius. Yep. And you're next. Yep. Uh, the lieutenant um, did save against the acids, so is not uh, going to burn from that. Um, it's going to see Ophelia go down. It's going to see that, like you know, everyone's kind of like beginning to run, unsure what to do. Um, is going to uh, is unable to cause any of those guys down, but is going to try and uh, is going to step up like a brave hero. Oh. Um, and you can see they pull out like a large warhammer, and it's just like, this is my city. Get out! And it's just going to bring the hammer down and try and slam it down. I'm going to use their guild sweep. So the creature has to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, unfortunately, it passes. Ah. Uh, so it comes to bring the hammer down, and you just watch as this creature just grabs the hammer out of like this fog-like <laughs> claw. Little creature, it's my city now. And you watch as the hand actually corrodes the metal, <laughs> as the acidic <laughs> fog actually begins to melt and corrode the hammer. Cool. Uh, I'm, that's just narrative, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just cool. Um, uh, that was uh, town. <laughs> it is go. <laughs> this is not our hub town. No, we're going. Sorry, Duke, we'll meet you next time. Um, so sorry, this is Percy's way not a like full everyone. flame <laughs> demon. Percy. It's like a visage of a, a It's shadow. not even flame, it's like green smoke. Yeah, like green okay. and purple smoke. And it's coming out of like Teresa's eyes and mouth. Yeah. I was trying to figure um, out if it was pointless to use a flame attack against it. Uh, against you it. could know yet. You can make an arcana check for me. Oh, see okay. what you know about planar creatures. Yeah, okay. Well, probably, yeah. oh, no, very little. Yeah. All I know is it's not made of flame. I'll try a flame attack. Okay. Um, so, yeah, in, I guess, recoiling from the poison acid attack and... Uh, did you fail your saving throw, by the I way? I did yeah. fail. Um, is there something I can do? One point of acid. One point. Is there something I can do to remove this acid? Or... Yes, there is. Uh, you or another creature or an ally can spend an action to wipe the acid off themselves. Action. No, I think... Um, in oh, the... you also get a save at the end of your turn. Oh, okay. Uh, so can you make a save for me as well, by the way, uh, please? I think it's a dexterity saving throw. Oh. She's down there. Uh, this would have been as she went down. This is to see, because the acid can still burn away at Nine. Nine, unfortunately, acid is still burning away at okay. Ophelia. That's going to cause failure. Yeah, yeah, sorry. In, um, yeah, in recoiling from the impact of that attack and blocking with runes, I'll almost reposition those same runes into three separate things and three quick jabs against those. I want to do a scorching ray. Three against... scorching rays against this thing? Yes. All three. Um, all three against this one demon thing. So I guess in the darkness of this, there's just streaks of fiery light. Separate attacks against... for each one? Separate attacks. I'm going to remind you of four fate points. I... Yes. Just because, like, you know, they are there to be used. Don't 
like, don't be afraid to use them. Oh, I, I know, know you're like, but then Mark gets more. And I, uh, I can't add them to damage, can I? Uh, you can You can add them to an attack roll, though, to make sure you hit. Do you want one? Mm. Mm -mm. This is three separate attack rolls for Scorching Ray, unfortunately, as well. So would that then be three fate dice? Yeah, with per yeah, okay. attack roll, I'm afraid. I'll, I'll use one. Same way, like, if I did it, I would have to um, add it to... Say if it was three separate attacks, I would have to add a damage die to each one. With an AoE, though, you add it to the, all of the targets. Yes, yeah. I'll see how it goes for now. Okay. Uh, I feel lucky. Nine. Total? <laughs> Nine total. Is a miss, unfortunately. You know Smog what? sort of parts and lets the blast go through it and then reforms. Um, I want more Glyph of Aegis back. I'm going to use uh, sorcery points for a seeking spell. Reroll. To reroll that one. Uh, 13. <laughs> Does that hit? It's higher than that. Just barely Just misses. misses. Ah, okay. I will tell you now that it's AC is 14. I'll take one of those dice, yeah. All right, I will whoop, spend one for you. That's okay. okay. Do you want the actual dice itself? Yes, please. Um, right, this one. Oh, my giddy aunt. Eight plus five, 13. Oh, my God. This thing made of fog and smoke just... I think in the recent darkness and the panic of this, I'm firing like these bolts. It's just going Just panic, here. just like, ah! Um, Meteors streaking through the sky. I won't use the next one. Uh, this is just going to be a straight up roll. Finally, unnatural 20. Uh, that oh, will sorry, 19. That will hit. 2d6 of fire damage. 2d6 of fire. Now, I'm trying to recall. How much psychic damage do I take if I was to... I believe it's all written on your thing. It probably is. I think it's a d4, I think. I believe it was a d4. I wish to empower this uh, this, this Scorching Ray. Good. Because I, I don't Good. like this dude. He's spooky. Good. You know what's spookier? Me. Uh, 10, I believe, right? It's an extra d10, so I am doing 2d6 plus, d10. 2D6 plus a d10. Wait, that is not a sorcerer's in power. No. This is not a sorcery in power. He's done this before. I have done this, this before. This is his spooky power. This scorching ray is this unnaturally is, powerful. Up power. Is hell I messed power? up my boy. His chaos power. Um, his broken crown that um, power. His all of the above power. <laughs> I'm just trying to say something and wait for his beast to twitch. You're getting nothing. You're getting Max nothing power. from me. He's the man whose name you'd love to touch, but you mustn't touch. Max Power. My eyes are twitching at this one. <laughs> 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 uh, that is uh, 13 damage. On, 13 points of fire damage. You see the first two, the creature almost reforms around. <laughs> Your little magics can't hurt. And then the last one, you see a glow underneath Xanthus's, like from within his tunic, as a bright kind of golden fire kind of ignites. And you just see this last blast becomes larger, more intense, almost glows that even brighter, maybe touches of blue fire almost touching it. And it punches through the fog. <laughs> kind of cutting this creature off mid, com, mid mid word. And you see it burns the smoke. It actually burns the fog itself away. You. What are you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could tell me, dude, but we don't know what he is. It's a learning experience for us all. <laughs> Anything else on your turn? Uh, I take a D4 of psychic damage, unblockable psychic damage, three. All right. Which, uh, I'll be honest, I'm on low health. Um, yep. uh, yes, that is me. All right. After Xanthius, we go to... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, the marksman <laughs> up on the roof. Here. Yeah, here. Ha -ha! Oh, on this body. Oh, baby. Um, <laughs> Come on, Greg. He will see that your fire had an effect. If it can um, burn, we can kill it. And you, he, he, this is like a shadowy thing. You don't even know what this. It, it could be a woman. It could be a man. You don't know who it is. They're like Batman at this point. <laughs> They've got a cloak. Get They've got bitch. a cape, <laughs> and they pull like a metal canister from their belt. They didn't get a chance to use this against yes. you. And they're gonna throw a blast powder bomb. Uh, Dink! <laughs> and the creature has to make a dexterity same throw. A two. Oh! So it does go off. Is Teresa gonna blow up? Uh, honestly, <laughs> it's only three points. Oh, of oh. Um, but 
it is, uh, it is, uh, there is like a concussive force and Teresa is kind of knocked to her feet. Teresa does take some of that fire damage as well. Um, you can see that her body is physically there. Right. And, it's, oh, yeah. and you see that like her clothing is now set on fire. The creature does not appear to be burning. It does take some damage from the fire. But yeah, Teresa is knocked prone. <sighs> And you see that as it does force down, the smoke creature is dragged down. It's not knocked prone, but it's kind of forced to move with her almost. Oh. Um, Weighed down now. Somebody pick yeah. up Teresa. Demon balloon. Run away with her and take her away. Um, I guess it reacts to the damage it's taken. I'm just wondering if it reacts more to the somewhere. damage Teresa has taken. <laughs> they do. <Yeah. laughs> um, that is going to be the marksman's go. Um, and then he runs, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then he, then he runs. Um, and then that brings us, unfortunately, back up to the top with the demonic creatures. Oh, I wanted to move as well. Okay, I didn't. It's fine. You can move if you want. I, I, I'm, I'm backing up. Uh, Especially if oh, I haven't taken my turn yet. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. You go wide. Yeah, we're going wide. <laughs> go wide. I'm going wide. Yeah. I'm intending to run down one of these side alleys, uh, hoping that people will follow, but yeah, not gr grouping up with everyone. Sorry, there was a lot on my turn. It's all right. I've let everyone down. <laughs> I'm currently mid. down. Yeah. Long sigh. I didn't hope to make this kind of video. <laughs> the creature. <laughs> oh I'll do better. <laughs> I'll be better. Oh, he's flying oh, over to no. me. Yeah, he oh, likes you. Oh, there he goes. He drags uh, Teresa's body. Does seem to slow him down. Um, and that slowing him down, it looks like almost uh, picks up momentum to try and almost blast you with force as he flies towards you. Uh -huh. But with Teresa being knocked prone, is you know slowed down, is not able to do that. Slow down, dude so just flew four hundred feet. <laughs> <laughs> so instead, is going to uh, just take a swipe at you with uh, their kind of fog-like sword. Um, mm -hmm. um, oh, that's pretty good. That's only a ten. To hit. That does not hit. <sighs> the runic Ooh. shielding, kind of holding as this blade is deflected away from you, Xanthius. Hell yeah. Um, it is uh, then going to use its uh, smoky eruption uh, on you. Uh, can you make a dexterity saving throw for me, please? Dexterity. Oh, isn't it? Dexterity save. <laughs> the the smoky steps. eruption. <laughs> Like hot boxing. Right from the oh, I don't know if this is a half damage stitch, is it? <laughs> you don't know what this does. Mm. <laughs> Given I don't know the effect of this, dying, I'm hoping to completely evade the damage because I have very low HP. I will use a fate dice on this deck save. Right. How many have we got left? Um, two. Can you got any heals left? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 deck save 11. 11 is still not enough, right. unfortunately. Fine. It does no damage, but you are thrown through these ah. boxes. Well, it, you are going to take some damage because you're thrown through I some think stuff. This might do it, yeah. 5, 10, 15, and knocked prone as these boxes go flying uh, away, as this almost like force of wind, like this kind of gust of power kind of shoots out as it kind of erupts in a smoky formation. Okay. Um, it's only going to take, I'll say I'll take uh, 1d6 of bludgeoning damage. Yeah. One point of bludgeoning damage. I'm still up. Uh, pff, ugh, but you're knocked prone as it kind of... Pff, and it does hit an area around it. Unfortunately, there were no other creatures there. It was targeting Xanthia specifically. Okay, um, okay. That is the demon's go. We go to Rowan. Rowan is going to turn to face the demon in a rush of uh, panic <gasps> and start charging towards him, getting his loot out. He hits a power cord. Yep. Bam and a flow of green energy goes behind him and flows into Ophelia. Okay. Healing word. Oh. Uh, bonus action, 2d4 plus four. It's a level two. Three. You're plus still two alive. Or five. I'm still up. Eight. Am I oh, Eight hit points back to Ophelia. I'm up. I'm up. <sighs> you come to uh, Ophelia, uh, still covered in acid on the ground. Um, Everything else. And while that was your bonus action. Bonus action, yeah. I'm going to try and plunge a long sword into its back. <laughs> into the <laughs> into the what smoky happened? like creature. <laughs> into the into the demon itself. Into a smoky creature okay. with my mundane sword, yes. Yes. I, I will tell you it is going to be resistant to this if you do it. Quite. Quite. But you can still make the attack. It does seem to have like you are able to affect its form, it's just resistant. 17. Oh. Hits! Ooh. Yeah, fucking hits. Uh, we need to get a Hoover. Yeah. Where's Luigi? 
Five points. Oh. So down to so down to two. two. Yeah, it's rounded down. Um, yeah, you strike through, and your your mundane sword does not quite find purchase, but it does dissipate some of the creature, especially from that wound it took from Xanthius's fire. You're almost able to like add to the 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 destruction that it suffered, and it's kind of like, what is this gnat that bites, demon? Leave my friends alone. <laughs> oh. I am going to infest them. They will become a part of me. After Rowan's turn, we go to Gruffith. Hello. You are no longer frightened, Gruffith. That's nice. Um. <laughs> I've got a really weird. Can I use a fate dice to do something a bit weird? That's what precisely part of the order there. You can make the offer, and then if uh, I'll say like, yep. The you can use the three notices. Is yeah. what it says here. Yep. I have a fisherman's Make net. Mm -hmm. I wish to throw it upon Teresa mm -hmm. to scoop her up and drag her away from the demon. All right. I'm going to just clarify one thing because I don't want you to waste your turn. Okay. The the demon's smoke mm -hmm. is connected to like Teresa's mouth and eyes. Okay. Like it's coming out. The smoke out of her mouth and eyes is forming the creature itself. So She's the genie's lamp. Yes, if you want to think of it like that way, that's almost kind of like how I imagine it. But imagine that it's still attached to it. I should explain Here's the part handle. two Here of my thought. Okay. I didn't verbalise. Okay. But seeing that Teresa being prone kind of affected his movement a little it, bit. It's connected to her. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way, like, so I've also got Entangle as well. Like, I was thinking of casting Entangle or throwing a net to keep her in position so this thing can't or yeah. struggles. Yeah, so what I would say that that would probably be then is you would basically be grappling the unconscious prone Teresa, which would be very easy. She'd yeah. fail it automatically because she's unconscious. Um, and then the demon on its turn, if it wants to move away, would have to physically try and pull Teresa out of your grasp. So it would make the opposed grapple with whatever modifiers it has. But yeah, you could totally basically make a grapple against Teresa with your net. Makes sense. Would Entangle be stronger, though? I feel like Entangle would be stronger. Entangle would be stronger because it's a saving throw and she automatically fails them. Yeah. I'm going to, OK, I'm not going to use a fake dice then because I feel yeah. like... I don't want you to a... waste it. Yeah, because yeah. like, it's a cool idea, but there's a month, there's other ways you can achieve what you want. Yeah, so it doesn't mean I sacrifice a spell mm -hmm. slot and this boy is looking weak. But, um, still up. Yeah, still up. I'm going to cast Entangle on... Okay. Uh, Teresa, and yeah. it is a 20 foot square, so I, I don't know if he. Basically, wants you to... don't want to hit your allies. I don't right? want to hit allies, but yeah. if I can try and hit, I don't think it will. So you do, the creature itself yeah. cannot be restrained. It's, it's just the fourth threat. But Teresa's body can be, and because yes. she's unconscious, she fails it automatically. So these plants basically hold her in place. I um, mean, she is now restrained, she cannot move, and you see that the smoke like demon tugs. And is unable, like Teresa's yeah. body's being pulled against it. That's so cool. on the demon's turn, at the end of the demon's turn, I'll make a strength saving throw for it to try and pull away. But it is going to be at disadvantage because it is trying to kind of pull away from from Teresa's body, um, and it doesn't seem uh, it would need to pull Teresa free of it, mm -hmm. and that is obviously harder. Nice. Um, so okay. yeah, it is currently locked in place. So I will also count the demon as being restrained. Okay. So attacks against it have advantage. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I am going to do a slightly modified. It can still, it, it won't have disadvantage on its attacks because it's not being affected. Yeah. But it's easier for you to hit it because it's locked. It's in harder place. for it to, like, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Does okay. that sound cool? That yeah, sounds yeah. cool as hell. All right. Um, nice. Also, great, love great cool idea, Gruff. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I just want to move a little bit uh, around. I'm dead. I'm, Gruff's dead. <laughs> These hands are pointless. Yeah. Uh, they just are. a little bit. Yeah. Just like there. Big grabbies. Um, like claws. And then mm. we just... Uh, Crispy, I love the claws, but yeah. they don't help. <laughs> I'll just shout, Santhius, to me! Mm. To you? Yeah. Move away from me. <laughs> Hang on. I, I can probably make it over. Uh, we then go to Daisy. Hello! Um, Thank you. Okay, seeing that people are fighting, I'm still going to keep my distance. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move around uh, the other side of the fountain and I basically want to use that little fountain as cover for me, but then step out and throw, um, yeah. throw blades yeah. at it. And I think like you hear in, in your voice, like Nim is kind of like, just keep your distance. We can fight this thing, but you need to keep mobile. Don't let it pin you down. Like, and it's kind of yeah. giving you that tactical advice, yeah. like, 
Um, okay, and I have advantage because it's for strain. Mm -hmm. So you'll get sneak attack if you hit as well. That was a natural one, so I'm glad I had. Oh my god, that was a four. Ooh. Me! You got two attacks, right? Okay, well, yeah. Uh, the first one unfortunately misses, but the bonus action. Still advantage. 18 plus 5. That will hit. hit. Yep. And I get sneak attack, but this is on my dagger, not my other one, so... But no it is way. still a Radiant no Blade. No. Yeah, because you can use the Radiant Blade as a thing, so it's 3d6, right? So... And this is Radiant Damage. Important distinction. That is. I'm guessing 11 damage. 11 points of damage. Um, it is not vulnerable, but it does take the full amount. It's not resistant it's not like resistant. to the sword. You watch as the Radiant Blade... You know, all of the other attacks, like even the fire kind of passed through this thing, the Radiant Blade sticks in it as if it's made of flesh. So from, whoosh, like Gambit, throwing the blade, whoosh, 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 kind of stops and you just start, whoosh, whoosh, the touch of the loosened, whoosh, looks around. I'm hiding behind the fountain. I'll make a perception check. I see you. No, you don't. <laughs> Soldier. <laughs> All right. Anything else on your turn, That's Daisy? Interesting. Nope. All righty. Uh, the, the 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 enforcers have run away. They're out of the fight. Uh, they are basically. Uh, actually, no. They dashed, so they didn't wipe the acid off. Oh no! Oh. Oh. If I roll more than three points we of damage, we were trying to make friends. Dead. Oh yeah. <laughs> you just hear in this alleyway. Oh, oh god! <laughs> they melt. Uh, yeah. I forgot. Like, they ran away. I forgot that they dashed. So I they... mean, they were also like they were. Uh, feared, right? Yeah, they, yeah, they were feared, so they just ran. Yeah. Um, anyway, tell, tell us they were bad men, Mark. No. Well, as they what die. is bad? <laughs> what is good? What is evil? They didn't pay their taxes. My legacy of crime is over. <laughs> Ophelia. Um, I would have killed again. Am I, am I still covered in acid? I guess I'm still am covered in acid. You are. So oh, you take oh three points of acid damage. We. You're still up. All right. Just. I'm gonna get up. Bonus that you say yeah. Bonus action, Fifteen feet. Up. Um, I guess so you still got your bonus action, you still have your action. Do I still have my um, blah, 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 blah points and shit? Uh, uh, so they would go away when your rage ends. ends. They're gone. So you're at reset to zero, reset unfortunately. To zero. <laughs> You've just been beaten up and no, you couldn't get the engine going. Like, you no. know, the, the machine doesn't get rolling, you know? Wipe the acid off. Yeah, I'm going to wipe please. the acid off. All right, so you <laughs> spend your action wheel, God, kind of wiping the acid to off. The, um, the fountain. Can I duck behind the fountain if I've got enough movement left? Uh, so you go 5, 10, 15. Yeah, you can get to here. Yeah, I'll get in there. Duck sure. in there and just... <laughs> Even probably, like, using the fountain to, like, wipe the acid yeah. off you and stuff. Yep, absolutely. That's my turn. All righty, that's going to be your turn. Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, we then go to Brave, Brave Lieutenant. Yeah! And the rusty hammer. And the rusty hammer. He has used his guild sweep attack, so he can't use that again. But he has got his blacksmith's hammer. Kill him, bro. Uh, that is a t hit twenty-one. Oh. Kill him, kill him, it is. Kill him, kill him, it is a is a, a mundane hammer, so very much like Rowan, it's not going to have its full effect. Sure. Uh, but it is nine points of damage, oh. so half down to four points of damage. God King. Boy. All right. The best of us. He's going to be around forever. Nothing's going to happen to him. Uh, stop talking. <laughs> As he hits it, I'm going to use this creature's villain action for the turn to use... Uh, there he goes. Uh, Devour a, NPC. No. <laughs> there goes my hero. Watch him. Uh, Acidic he retribution. Dies. Oh, shit. Um, each creature within 15 feet of the target. Oh, so 15. Rowan, 15. Not me, so, I don't think. Uh, 5, no. 10, 15. Oh, close. Yeah, well, you would have actually been here. Oh, so um, it does get you. It though. does get you, because you would have been knocked basically. from this thing. So I, oh, I yeah, this yeah. thing is technically like hovering here, basically. So like Rowan's so actually Zan's right dead here. then. Yeah. Um, so, uh, no, well, we'll see. Uh, so Rowan, <laughs> Xanthius, and the Lieutenant all must make dexterity saving throws DC 13. I am prone. And the Entangle doesn't... Um, it doesn't affect this, no. It's just... Does, does prone affect Yay. dexterity? Uh, I don't believe it does, no. I'm going to say it doesn't, for now. Watch this. Watch this drive. Oh, baby, I passed! I hope you did. <laughs> if 19 passes. If 19 passes, DC 13. Hell yeah. Rowan? 15. Does he 15. still take half damage, though? You still take half damage. Yeah. The lieutenant fails. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is 12 points of acid damage, so well, six. Yeah. six. Oh, uh, I want to use my shield to... Not my shield, okay. my uh, my runes to... How many have I got left? 
Okay. Uh, did I use one a couple of turns ago, or one turn ago? No. You did, but then you said you got them back because you used Seeking Spell. Yes, I did. I have two. I'm going to use... The is still up, but take some damage. One of those. Minus four. So six. Minus four is two. So I need to use another zero. one. <laughs> one. I reduce it by five points. I have one HP. Right. I see. Wow. Okay. Wow. But I use both of my runic shields. Yeah. So you <laughs> kind of, as you're on the ground, trying to protect yourself with this runic magic. I like... Yeah. <laughs> what, this thing... Just erupt. launching towards me, I just shield <laughs> over the very top of me, like Indiana Jones in a fridge. Excellent. Um, that was after the lieutenant's go. Um, Fuck you now. Can't so believe you're still up. I'm still up, baby. Uh, so you've not taken your turn yet, have you, Xanthus? And uh, no. it's your turn next. When does the acid damage happen? Um, are you, well, you coated in acid. You didn't wipe it off, did you? Is it the start right, of the turn? Oh, One point of acid damage. But right. he, he passed, he passed, so he didn't get coated in it. I did get coated in it. I did fail. Did you save at the end of your turn? But I thought Probably. you did a half save. You saved at you the saved end. You saved at the end of your turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, it is off. There you go. Dear God. Uh, <laughs> listen, I can't keep track of that stuff. Like, yeah, I, yeah there welcome. are there are so many little things yeah. going on. You're welcome. Moment. You are every the best. woman to me. <laughs> so is that saying all women are the same? You are prone. <laughs> no, I'm saying every woman is Kim to me right now. <laughs> I don't know how it works. <laughs> Three Kims here. I'm prone. Yes. Um, what would you like to do? Uh, well, I would like to stand up. Okay. Um, Half movement. Uh, Groff summoned me. You can't, boy. I can't. I mean, I have to go 15 feet. And also, feet, this right? thing has reach. It's got reach, yeah. It's like, has it got like 15 feet of reach? Ten yeah. feet of reach. Ten. Oh, so I am still out of. He's going to reach for the stars. Wait, am I within ten feet of it? Uh, you're in. You're within fifteen feet of him. Okay, well I want to go with his uh, uh, eruption. I want to go around the back of this uh, lamp post. Um, scramble over these boxes. Scramble over the boxes. You can only get to there because this is difficult terrain. That's okay. Um, the best I can do, but I'm going to do another scorching ray. Um, All right. Uh, because we st uh, still have advantage, right? You do. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So three advantage attacks against this guy. Oh. Uh, that is a 23 for the first one. 23 hits. Uh, I'll just do all three attacks and then see how the damage goes. Sure. Um, it's not resistant to it, so... 22. Hits. And uh, 18. 18 hits. All three hits. So you can do 66 damage here if you want. 66 damage. 2d6 each, each blast. Uh, can oh, I have a boy. d6 from someone? Thank you. Um, right. That is... Oh. You're welcome. 11 on the first one. Um, eight on the second one, so 19, and seven on the Holy third shit. one. That's good damage. Yeah, you watch as Xanthius, barely still standing, kind of stumbles over these boxes, <laughs> he does his best covered in you know, <laughs> burns of acid, and just bam, 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 these blasts of fiery uh, energy pass through this thing, you know, burning away at this fog and, and diminishing it. Significantly. Oh. This thing looks rough. Good. No, I still must. Even if you defeat me now, I will return and I will remember here. Oh. Don't like him. Don't like him. Anything oh. else in your turn, Xanthius? Uh, that was really good. That was a lot of damage. Uh, bonus action. Um, no, no, I uh, no. Da 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 da! Da 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 da! The crossbow guy, he's back! He fires a grappling hook! No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the mysterious oh. marksman uh, will take a shot with his crossbow. Um, for a 20 to hit, he hits. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, We're never going to see this person. Oh, actually, again. no, it's a detail. It's like the mysterious I'm going to kill him. I'm going to make a point. We need to make friends with this one guy. You! Five, eight. What's your name? It's a mundane crossbow, so eight, so it goes to four. I am the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> the bolt does pierce through and it kind of scatters some of the smoke. And you kind of see the crits. It definitely hits and does, yeah, seems to have injured it further. And the perfect um, trajectory hits Xanthius. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but that is the marksman. The tiniest of scratches on your arm. <laughs> Collapse instantly, yeah. Sepsis. I believe that is a brand new round. That is everybody has taken a turn. Oh, what a guy. Oh, no. This thing is looking pretty rough. So, yes, I am going to. First, of all, I have to see if one of his abilities recharges. Oh, no. Well, it's not the beam. 
I need a six. Three. Sorry. <gasps> That's not recharge. Okay. So, I don't know which one this is. I think it's acidic retribution. Um, it is. That was its no. It was the big Shadow. line attack. Uh, it was recharging. Um, instead, what I'm going to have it do is. Blah, 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 uh, Oh, it turns away from me. Oh, that's good. No, it's kind of turning around. It can't move because it's still restrained. Oh, yeah. Um, so I am just going to launch an attack. I can't do that as a range. So I am going to attack... Um, I mean, I'm not going to attack the lieutenant. I'm going to attack Rowan. <laughs> He's yeah. right there. So I'm going to attack Rowan. Uh, I am going to use its acidic claw to attack you, Rowan. Uh, but I think that's going to be a failure. That's only a nine to hit. Oh. That does not hit it. Yeah. So he goes to swipe, but you manage to duck underneath it. You can see that it's just lashing out, almost like in a death throes now. The smoke is beginning to uh, filter away from Teresa's mouth. This thing is nearly at its end. Um, we go to after the demon. It is Rowan. Your turn. Get him. The impulse to do vicious mockery. I will not do it. <laughs> I'm going to swing. If this thing might be immune to psychic damage, you don't know. Right. It's a fog I'm monster. just going to continue my uh, long sword mm -hmm. damage. That's all I can really do at this point. Mm -hmm. While shouting, Xanthius, that's so impressive, but please stop drawing attention to yourself. <laughs> they are just beams of light. It's like a runway. <laughs> 17 plus 5. Attack There's here. a hit. That hits, right yeah. here. And then a d10. Uh -huh. Two-handed sword strike. Yeah. Nine points. So after two, four, four is enough. Yeah. yeah. You nice. swing the sword down and you actually sever the smoke as it's coming out of Teresa's mouth, and that seems to be in its weakened state, the creature is no longer able to maintain its form. You watch as the last few trails and Teresa just completely unconscious falls um, on the ground. The last thing you hear is. You have not seen the last of me. I will remember. And then almost picked up by the night breeze, mm. it vanishes. We're in danger. The oh. dwarf kind of stumbles, puts his hammer on the ground, <laughs> like catches his breath. The marksman reappear in just random fights. I just love the idea that now there's going to be like urban legends of like, did you hear oh. about the roof to Is it going to be like that one wolf pack member that just appears yeah. like, around the corner <laughs> every now and then? I am, well, I, that, that, I'm putting them down as the mysterious marksman. Excellent. Write this down on your fate dice. That's a new ability. We can call upon the I marksman. <laughs> Like cool. <laughs> I, I, I think that that can only be used in Ashen's Rest. Right. Yes! And maybe you... I think that you've earned the trust of the Blacksmith's Guild here. <laughs> yes! Hell yeah. I really like the idea of evolving abilities that are based on narrative scenarios that you can spend fate dice on. Only at night and only in, in the alleyways. Rest. There's rooftops. If there's a rooftop. If there's a rooftop, yeah. yeah. we can call upon if, a wayward bolt. <laughs> yeah. I really like that as an idea. I'm going to think about it, Yeah. but yeah. I really like it. If not, hey, also, I just love Also, you the, the don't know who they are. You yeah. know nothing about about them. We will discuss. Um, we'll get to the bottom of this. Our hero. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, we come out of combat. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I, I'm in a similar position. I am you, very wounded. Yeah, uh, you do see that, like, now that the, you have a brief moment's pause, right, the light's been shut off, the people in these houses, like, the doors open and, like, people peer out. You see frightened faces, like, is it gone? Like, do you, what was that thing? They're like looking towards you and they they don't seem to know who this blacksmith is. Like, this is not their part of town. So like these frightened people, like, well, we saw you fighting with the Carpenter's Guild. We, we didn't want to get involved, but what was that thing? Like, oh, we were, we were trying not to watch, but uh, when I saw it and we heard its voice and they're like looking at you with these terrified faces. Um, obviously there was, there's, there's been like, you know, 
sounds of fighting, but you don't see any signs of like the the Duke's guards like being summoned or anything like that. Because maybe the the guild sort of like this was a bit of a street fight Look between the other gangs. Way. There was a bit of a like, well, we're going to ignore that part of town, um, and there wasn't like a big explosion or like loud magic. Really, this is you know, it's unlikely that the Duke's guards are here. Um, some of the people that live here. They are going to come out, and the people that like all the the knocked unconscious carpenters guild, and maybe even some of the ones that were slain in the combat, they are going to look at you all, and the blacksmith is going to kind of say, "I don't know what happened here, but I know that without you, we probably wouldn't have made it. We'll we'll take care of this." And he gestures at the unconscious carpenters guild and things like that, and he's like, "Look, if the word of this gets out." I don't know what kind of panic it might cause, but whatever the Lamplighters Guild are up to, it's bigger than I could have ever imagined. Um, I think uh, go on. we'll take this to the Duke. The Duke needs to know. They, he needs to know. They, they need to know. Uh, I'll let Hira, the Guild Master of the Blacksmiths Guild, know what happened here. What's your name? Oh, yeah, he, he kind of like says, oh, my apologies. Uh, I wasn't prepared to give you my name until now. Um, call me Grayson. Grayson, it was an honor to fight alongside you today. And I'm glad it was alongside you, not against you. He looks towards the alley. I wish the others had made it. We weren't expecting we thought this would be a, just a beating. See you off, give you some bruises, maybe some broken bones. We were just trying to protect not just our part of Ash and Rest, but the carp. We knew the carpenters had also been having trouble with the lamplighters. We wanted to come lend them a hand. But I'm glad I. I'm glad that. Um, I'm glad that this didn't turn into bloodshed between us. But that thing. And there's definitely like he looks towards. Xanthius and Daisy. There's a little twinkle of like something. I don't know what you did, but that thing seemed to. It just seemed to know things about. I said stuff. What was it talking about? Uh, Lucence and you used magic. I've never seen anything like it. I think um, following like the battle. Like shortly afterwards, um, last time I used that ability, it was like a roaring flame in my chest. This time, it's more diminished. It's that light that was pulsing is like slowly starting to fade again. Mm. Um, I'm like clutching at my chest, but also trying to go towards Graf, who was calling for me to come closer. Yeah, kind um, of staggering and limping your way over there. We were hired by the lamplighters to protect the engineer. Maybe we can go back. Maybe we can find out something from the inside. Um, we can gain their trust. We'll call this a failed mission, but we might be able to find out some more if we go back to them. You do what you think you have to. If you need the help of my guild, Hera, our guild mistress, we're in the Greyforge district. Let us know. Keep us informed. And if you can, speak to the Duke. Let him know. I'll tell you this. The Duke won't believe you without hard proof, I don't think. The Lamplighters have been a big part of Ash and Rest for a very long time. They were... They helped defend the city long ago in the Oriat insurrection. The Duke trusts them. So if you want to bring allegations against them, you'll need proof. What they're up to, I don't know. And it sounds like, I don't think any points at Teresa. I don't think this young woman would have put herself in that danger if she knew. But someone does. Maybe this isn't all of the Lamplighters Guild. Maybe it's just some of them. Maybe this is, maybe it's not even them. Maybe they're being used as pawns like this woman was. But something I can't even imagine. I'd also recommend, if necessary, go and speak with the church. Bright Shadow Cathedral, whatever that thing was, it wasn't from our world. And that means, and he look, looks up 
impacts from beyond. There's no way they would allow something like that to happen here in the city. Look, I've got to go. I've got to attend to my people and I'll send some people. We'll try and take care of this. Um, I'll tell you this, though. The Carpenters Guild aren't going to rip. They're not going to think on you favorably. From what I could tell, you've you've beaten up their lads and you've killed a few of their uh, lackeys, for better of a word. They're probably not going to be your mates, but uh, I'll let them know that you weren't... You didn't know that you're not working for the Lamplighters, that you were pawns in this. Try and minimize that damage. If you need me, I'll be up in the guild, Blacksmith's Guild. But I've got to go. Be safe. Thank you. Yeah. Avoid when the lights are on. Something was different about this, but if you go out of the main city, if you go out of the main thoroughfares, you go to the Greyforge district, here to Riverside, just be wary of your thoughts. Don't get caught up. Try not to get angry until we can figure this mess out. Maybe there was something different about this woman. I don't know. But just as a precaution, be wary. And if you know anybody who knows anything about magic, maybe they can help figure things out. And he points to the broken lantern like, I don't know magic. I, I don't know anything about it. But if you can find someone who does, maybe. Or if any of you can examine it, figure something out. And then he'll basically go and gather his fallen companions. Uh, he blows on his whistle and somewhere... The masked marksman, the mysterious marksman, meets up with him again. Mm. Um, but yeah, Grayson's going to make his way out. How does um, Teresa? Well, I was going to say um, mm -hmm. Rowan would forklift. She's only a halfling, Teresa. so like she's tiny compared to Rowan. Yeah, and easy. Put her on a shoulder. Willing to carry her. Yeah, she weighs nothing. Like you can easily carry her easily. Yeah, swing her around like this. Yeah, easy. Yeah. No, she is unconscious. She's like like the guys you knocked out. Like this is not her. She's sleeping. She is like unconscious. Like she was at zero hit points and is now stable, basically. Mm -hmm. Rona looked down, a little worried at Teresa and just very gently closed her jaw. Yeah. And eyes. Sure. I think maybe <laughs> we need Teresa to join us at the Duke's audience tomorrow as an eyewitness. If she remembers any of it. If she remembers, but maybe rather than returning her to the Lamplighters Guild. Yes, I agree. We care for her tonight. Maybe as well we get eyewitness statements from all of these citizens here. So at least we can take it to the Duke. Can we take the light to the broken one? Good idea. Oh, um, yes, we can. Look yeah, you can. You can't take the whole lamppost, but you can salvage like the crystals. It looks like there was like an engraved crystal with various glyphs and sigils on it. Um, you can see that there is uh, not like technological mechanisms, but more like um, a magical kind of like looking enchantments. This is an enchanted item rather than anything else. Mm. There are bands of metal. All of it has like engraved with sigil markings and. Um, it's not just rings. the crystal itself, it's though, the, is it? The it's casing as the well. The casing and the because it was connected to the ley lines, right? So it was the entire. Well, they, I mean, the door. They said something about ley lines again. You yeah. don't know how much is that true. There is like a metal pole that yeah. goes into the ground. Yeah, but that's like a massive like you know, sort of like eight foot tall metal solid steel or solid iron yeah. pole. You're not going to be able to carry that. No, no, no. I, I just, um, yeah. like the crystal itself isn't the only part of this no, magical no. construction. No. Um, no. I guess Imagine like a kind is. of like a lamppost, right? It's that. But you've got like the top, the, you know, the light bit that's been broken off by the radiant blade and the arrow, like that's been broken. Yeah. You can take that with you. So you, if somebody wants to write down that you have a broken Everlight, um, cool. As long as some, because again, like, make sure you write down if you're going to take yes, stuff. Make yeah. sure you write it down. Um, I, I think maybe I'll stay here and collect some eyewitness statements from the citizens here. You might want to talk to that Blackwing fella about this kind of magic. He also wanted to see Ophelia. That's true. Please. I can help you with statements, Gruff. You're good at that. You're good at the fancy writing. Um, Who is this Blackwing? Oh, that's a big story. Uh, yeah. We thought a tower ate him, yeah. and then it turns out the tower didn't eat him. It opened a secret magic door that wasn't there me. before. Just for me. Just for him. Uh, there's a tower with no door. You've heard of this before. Gruff tried to climb the tower. Gruff, Gruff climbed couldn't climb. climb the tower. It was very smooth. Gruff. Couldn't get his claws in. All right. So then we... the, the tower itself doesn't matter. Inside the tower is a being more ancient than Althea itself. And we met them. 
What is in this town? Mm. Ancient magical beings, demons coming out of smoke. What is happening? Would you like me to get you a glass of wine? I... I am here for diplomacy and for educational purposes, and I'm... And you're getting it. A lot of education, because we're all learning a lot here too. I really died! <laughs> Xanthius! I'm there too! <laughs> if it helps, we don't really know what's going on either. This isn't normal. This is very I wrong. I feel very out of my depth, I'll be honest. Um, Bruin's going to be cradling Teresa and mm -hmm. just do a gentle final last spell slot healing word. Oh. Yeah. Um, her eyes kind of flutter open and she's just like, oh, what? Hello. No need to be alarmed. Oh, what, what, uh, what happened? You, are you okay? Uh, yes, I've got, a, I've got a terrible headache and my, my throat feels all sort of funny and, and sore. And the last thing I remember is, is you went to speak with those, those the, the blacksmith, the, the thugs, and, and then, oh, I, I just, I was so frightened, and... It's okay. You, you don't need to recall all of that right now. Let's just remain nice and calm. Oh, okay, yes. And yeah. that all the bad stuff is over now. The ruckus oh. is dispersed, so to speak. Oh, bad. And we're going to take you somewhere where you can get some assistance. Oh, but that, that's not... Uh, but the lights, we've got to fix the lights. And she, uh, she can see that she's still, like, sleepy and a bit delirious, but is like... No, 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 I've got to do my job. I'm afraid you're injured and you need some attention. Oh, no. All right. And, and you see like, uh, her eyes. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely an element here of, like, she's had a pretty terrible fright and she's been badly injured. And even your healing, like, she's like, all right, uh, OK. Um, I'll just have to I'll just have to apologize to the to the chief engineer, the chief illuminator. Um, Right. Uh, what maybe, sort of... maybe I was. Maybe this was too early for me to. Maybe I should just have stayed in the workshop. And she's just sort of like, yes, uh, let's head back. This has been a bit, bit of a. And, and you can see she doesn't seem to remember. Like, like her memory seems yeah, to I'm, stop. I'm looking at the point. a little concerned at everyone else. It's like oh, I don't seem to remember. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think we're returning the same sort of similar so looks. I will Daisy... happily take the broken everlight though. Okay, um, all right. Just if we're going to uh, all right. Blackwing. Yeah. So You're Daisy right. and Gruff are going to stay and try and gather some sort of report points. It's going to take some time. Um, just to speed things up, you gather the statements like, the, but the people that live and have seen what was happening, remember that like this is quite dark and everyone's going about their business. There's um probably yeah there would be three families and the people that run the store. Um, two of the families actually saw what happened and the, the the storekeeper saw what happened. But they're terrified. There's a lot of sort of like, oh, well, I think it, it looked like some sort of, like, smoke came out of the woman's mouth. It was like some sort of... You know, they say things like, well, maybe some sort of elemental or magic spell. Like, they don't really know because they didn't get a close-up look of it. They speak in very vague terms. Um, they can collaborate that... Something came out of Teresa yep. and attacked everybody, um, and that you were uh, you had fought the guild. Uh, that there was a bit of a kind of guild business. You had a fight, um, and then you went to talk to this other guild, and then something happened to the lamplighter lady, and then this this thing came out and attacked everyone. Um, and there's like acid, you can see that there's acid markings all over the ground. They can contribute to pretty much everything that wasn't this was a demon mm -hmm. and that it was because of some sort of influence from the light. Sure. They don't know any of that stuff. But they, they I mean they were, still saw uh, something something happened. that is adjacent to what we would be to Some this, sort of um, magical incident happened. Does this plaza or this area have mm -hmm. like a particular name to it? God damn it. Um it's okay if they haven't named it yet. We'll just find out a little Demon bit later. Gate. I will tell you next week. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking around for a sign, and it's weird. It's just too dark. It's too dark to it's read. Passage. Yeah, it's spattered with acid. Alien Avenue. I what? think <laughs> next next week I'll have the thought to use down to flame. <laughs> Electric <laughs> right. Avenue. Electric um, Avenue. No, it's not. Uh, I will let you know that. Sure. But it will. I think, um, uh, I think it is good to give it a name. Well, yeah, I mean, it makes sense if we were to describe, like, the people of this area here would, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, if I have got the broken Everlight, could I make a quick, uh, like, a check for anything? I don't know. Sure. This boy is wielding similar magic. You can make an Arcana check. 
Maybe just put it in your heart. Yeah, if it infects you, just, I'm knocking yeah. you on the head. One what question I have, if you guys can remember, you might not remember, but when we did, when you were helping the bathhouse, mm -hmm. who was it that actually investigated the fountains? Hello. So it was you, and you were the one who picked up, there was like a malignant aura, wasn't it? I got uh, an idea as well. the idea as well. That's right. Um, all right. Yes, I'll kind of check, please. Yeah. Uh, I've got the other light, and they did say someone magical could check It's the check out. end of the session. Is it? It is pretty much the end of the session. Feels gamey to me. Straight roll. Uh, that is a... I appreciate it. I respect it. 14. A 14. So, I mean, yeah. As you're walking and you're turning this thing over in your hand, examining it, there's no sign of, you know, yeah, this is like a light. Most of the enchantment here is it draws upon this um, ley line sort of power. It, it, rather than it being underground, the ley lines are almost like invisible kind of like um, wind currents, like these invisible currents of magic floating from the larger brazier, uh, braziers, uh, braziers, <laughs> larger braziers, mm -hmm. braziers on the sure. wall. It's, it's in my head now. Fourth try. <laughs> um, and these kind of flow through the city, and the lights draw on that power yes. to power the magic. And it is a pretty simple light spell. Uh, it is permanent, it's continuous. Okay. Doesn't need to be upkeeped. Make an investigation check. Investigation? Yeah. I don't have any bonus from investigation, I think. I, I will use a roll, fate up, for this. roll that one in front of you because it's yeah. going to go away in a minute. No, I don't, I don't really like the idea of using them just because of end of session, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes sense I would use it here. Oh, actually, so I rolled a 10 and a 6 on the fate dice, so 16. 16 total? 16 total, I have plus 0. I would say with a 16, you, you're you not an engineer, you're not an officer, you don't really know how this works, but there is there's something about it, and it's, as you're kind of fiddling with the light, um, not something that Teresa would have been interacting with, mm -hmm. um, but something she's installed. Like it looks like she's installed some sort of um, sort of metallic disc that's used to draw on the ley lines and maybe like enhance the light. Maybe this is what she was repairing. Mm -hmm. But that disc, yeah, you you can tell that that's what Teresa added during her repairs. And as you kind of fiddle with the disc, you there's a little bit of it that's loose, and when you slide it you notice that it's not one metal, solid metal disc, it's two. Mm -hmm. But the seam is almost invisible. And you slide it, and when you open it, there is something else there. And what you see is, it's not what you're thinking, it is um, another magic sigil. But this is not one that creates light. You don't know what this sigil does, but you know it is not an understood spell. And there is almost a symbol drawn in the middle of it mm -hmm. that looks like a number of, uh, it's like a circle with multiple geocentric circles around that circle. It, and there are small runes. You don't know what they mean, but they seem yes. to almost indicate points around this sy symbol. They're definitely not light spell. Way beyond the veil of light spell this at this point. This is something else entirely and hidden. Um, the fact that you were suspicious is the only reason that you found it. Like, Teresa probably would never have known this was here when she was putting it in. And these discs are in... what, every lantern in the city? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, the ones that are on the ley lines. Or, yeah. or maybe well, yeah. it's just, maybe Teresa was sent out to repair these ones and this is a new thing to fix them. You don't know. Yeah. You'll yep, need yep, to, yep, you'll yep, need yep, to yep, either yep, ask yep. her or find out more about them. But well, we kind of, I almost imagine for the episode, we see that last, like, you looking at this bizarre symbol and mm -hmm. this very eldritch-looking spell incant incantation enchantment, and that's maybe the last thing we see as the episode ends. That is... Juicy. Awesome. Juicy. I am so into this. <laughs> right, I love Harry? This. Yeah. Yeah. Just poor Ophelia just kind of just got, yeah, got battered around. Yeah. Um, it's okay, you'll meet an ancient being next episode. <laughs> well, we'll see. Nice. We'll see. Maybe. Um, with that, that is going to oh. be the end of the episode. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next Hell time. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. See ya. Bye.